Welcome to the Cherry Picker, the horror movie podcast where we like to kill people, but not really. I'm your host, Zach Cherry, and with me as always is... Eddie of Edward is Truth. <laughs> and today we are talking about Child's Play 2, released November 9th, 1990. Uh, evidently, this is exactly two years after the original because that was also released on Uh, november 9th which is andy barclay's birthday (gasps) canonically this is happening sometime around or shortly thereafter what if that was his birthday and they just didn't know it i mean (laughs) that would have been hilarious it was just just, terrible more more reason for him to just like be having such a shitty time in, right, in like that care. tracking shot where they're ha- where the Simpsons are having an argument, and then it slowly tracks over to hit down the hall to his bedroom of him just looking like this, and the thing he's thinking, his inner monologue is, "Nobody even knows it's my birthday." No, I. It would have been funnier <laughs> if he like had like a party hat and like a little like party <laughs> like he came home with all this stuff, and they were like arguing, and he just went to his room and was like. Nobody remembered my birthday. <laughs> just like he could go. <laughs> well, they are the Simpsons. He could have gone full Lisa Simpson and just sung "Happy Birthday" to himself, yeah. and then just you know until he just collapsed into a sob. Like they they did that in one episode of The Simpsons. I remember. It's terrible. Yeah, they for, they forget about Lisa a lot. All the, the time, Simpsons. the yeah. plight of the middle child. Yeah. yeah. Poor poor so, poor Lisa. Child's Play 2. So, so here we are. Okay. <laughs> so <laughs> last last time we did uh, Child's Play, I, I guess the, the burden of the, the opening premise was placed on me by you <laughs> because... <laughs> Because I tried the la- in the Child's Play yeah. one to do uh, a Chucky, and it didn't work. And you inadvertently did a Chucky impression somewhere in the body of the pod. And it was so much better than mine, I figured, well... <laughs> and Zach here's the pressure, the pressure time. mounting. And then the last <laughs> episode, the end... You, like, you reminded everyone of that. <laughs> so now it's like I've gotten messages. Andre, our editor, messaged me. He's like, I can't wait to hear the... The, oh no the chucky thing and some other people had, had mentioned it as well i'm just like great now if i don't do it uh i'm i'm a liar and an asshole so yes let's, zach's been freaking out y'all like let's, he let's, just no pressure you're around loved ones we all love you zach collectively they told me they told me to tell you thank you okay let's yeah. let's do this <clears throat> Two years after Karen Barkley has publicly confirmed her son Andy's story about a killer good guy doll come to life, the system has separated mother from son. That meddling bitch Karen has been thrown in the loony bin, and that little shit Andy is now in foster care. <laughs> <laughs> meanwhile the play pals enterprise has reassembled the now infamous chucky doll inadvertently reawakening the soul of charles lee ray now andy must acclimate to a new routine with his foster parents phil and joanne simpson and his fellow foster candidate, the equally shitty and annoying Kyle. (laughs) But will the events of the past make adapting a little more than mere child's play (laughs) too? What the fuck was that? Do you hear that, Zach? It is the applause from every everyone no. who is streaming <laughs> this, everyone who has downloaded it and listening to it or who's watching on YouTube. Oh, my God. That was so good. And you know what? And it was good. Like, I'm laughing, but I'm not laughing. Oh, I forgot to do the laugh. Bad. I forgot to do yeah, the forgot- laugh. Oh, do you want to do the laugh? <laughs> 
Capture the voice quality yeah. just perfectly. I I think everybody should show your appreciation by telling Zach he nailed no, it. No, it's... Uh, in, in the comments below, <clears throat> or DM him. <laughs> Find a way. You done? You Make done. it happen. <laughs> I'm just celebrating Fame. your triumph. All right, yes, I'm done. <laughs> okay, whatever. It, 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 was, it was mid, <laughs> but thank you. Anyway. I had a ball. It was great. It was great. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Moving on. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Child's, Child's Play 2. What? Okay. Because we talked a lot about <sighs> everything in the first one. Like, we, we, we went pretty yeah. deep. Um, and I think that, like, you and I have discussed, we probably even mentioned it in the last episode, but... I know we've, we've definitely talked about it uh, amidst ourselves off pod. And we've agreed that like Child's Play 2 is probably the best one. Um, oh, I mean. Do, I, do we okay. still feel that way? I mean, like two films in because I, I, I'm i kind of going back <laughs> and start, starting from the beginning. That I, Is this better or worse? Than, and, and I don't like to use the word worse. Is it better or is it or is the first one better? Because I, I don't like better or worse either, because yeah. I, I love one and I love two. Um, but it's and it's not even about e- loving them equally. It's not quantitative, it's qualitative. I yeah. think the great the greatest thing for me, I guess, overall about Child's Play 2 is how much more it seems to kind of be moving into its it itself as an entity, as like a franchise, as a saga, as a world that they're creating yeah. tonally. I feel like it's much more consistent with what follows, whatever that may be. I mean, the the, the franchise itself fluctuates, yeah. but I feel like the sense of humor and the sense of camp, which we covered a lot, we discussed that a lot and addressed it a lot. I feel yeah. like it's even present more so in this one. And that's something that I really appreciate about it. What about mm-hmm. you? I, I kind of like came out of this one feeling like it's the most basic of the child's play <laughs> movies. And I'm, and I mean that in a good mm-hmm. way. Cause normally like, you know, for like instance, for like Halloween, I'd probably say that like Halloween four is the most basic or, or something like that. But it just like, sure, sure. Th- it's, it's almost like it's like stripped down to the bare bones here and everything that's kind of left is like it's very lean. Um, mm. It's it, it has little bits of like everything that's important. I think that maybe what's because I I like I love this movie, but you know, coming off of the heels of watching the series, uh, mm. more specifically season one, I feel mm. that you know if I was to do a ranking, I actually might enjoy the first season of the show much better than any of the movies because I feel that that kind of encapsulates all like eras of the the Child's Play franchise because you kind mm. of you get the the campiness which I think is like really in full blast with like Bride and Seed but then you get kind of like the with the the uh, curse and cult the more kind of uh, social commentary of everything and then you also get like the first two movies or like even the first three where there's just like a lot of focus on the characters and like the relationships and just like like mm-hmm. Andy and, and like the whole family bit. So I feel like they've with the show like Don Mancini has taken like something from every era of Child's Play and just like infused it into mm-hmm. that. And that's that's why like I really do love the first the first season, we'll, we're going to talk about the second season soon because um, it is a, a little bit choppy. But I, I, I think that like the, the first season of Chucky was like pretty perfect. And mm. it does mirror Child's Play 2 a lot. Like I think that they were going for like the same kind of tone and everything. Mm. So I think that like that's why I do appreciate this movie so much more than the others. It's just, mm. it's just that because it is so so like stripped down to to like its most basic essentials that it feels like there mm-hmm. are certain things missing like i would have liked from this movie to maybe have like we you, we just said like it was and if like it could have been andy's birthday and they like neglected it they forgot 
because it feel the story feels very rushed in a way because like that's what happens when you kind of like break it down uh to such as like a simple point that mm. we don't really we don't really like sit with him too long and just kind of like get his full experience because this is a very action heavy movie i feel like it's constantly moving from like set piece to set piece until like we you know we mm. get to the end and there's just like a million endings <laughs> but it's <laughs> yeah I, I mean i i think of the movies like this is my favorite um but i i'm kind of i i'm of the mind right now that child's play or chucky is strongest as a television series because i feel that each entry like a like a 90 minute long movie is not enough time to to like properly explore all these characters and themes it's just too short and like the wait between each movie when like sometimes it's like four years in between movies it's not satisfying enough whereas like if you have a tv show it just feels like you can you can do everything in a much like wider um area and it mm -hmm. like quickly and more efficiently so i hope that the series goes on for a while because i don't know if like this could ever go back to movie form and if it does i don't think it'll ever be it, it, like it's too complex at this point to ever be something like child's play 2 again no the only thing i could see because mm. i have, still haven't finished uh season two of uh uh chucky yeah um waiting for it to be released on blu-ray so because i saw the first yeah. i think three or four episodes um but uh and it was just so impossible to locate after it aired unlike the season one where it was like here's the blu-ray and here we dropped the whole season on Peacock after we showed now, the finale yeah. yeah 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 uh yeah. but only season one i've been checking i've been checking yeah season two is not <laughs> but right. yeah but um yeah. anyway um but oh, I, the only way I could see them maybe returning to movies i mean whatever they do as long as we keep getting the content i'm fine but i think the the most exciting way to approach a film project would be to maybe make it the 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 the, the finale you know like the the series finale as it were like just kind of like leave your final season on a cliffhanger and then if you want to know how it ends go see the movie and then a bunch of people you know going to the movies and you know like filling the box office to like you know go yeah. witness you know this incredible franchise just, unfortunately uh, because of like how franchises work in this day and age yeah. it's just like there's no there's no like finality to anything you know like halloween resurrection yeah. and and shit yeah. like that like there's always going to be the, the studio wanting to make another one and yeah. another one so it's like it, if they do it it'll have to be like a really like it, it depends again like how much ownership does don mancini have over this mm -hmm. franchise because even even if that's over then there's always the threat that oh we'll just make a another remake or a sequel to that remake or whatever so it's he can he can very well like end the story with uh brad dourif and uh and, and jennifer mm. tilly and uh, alex right. vincent and, and and everyone yeah. but it's like the 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 concept of chucky will never die charles lee ray no. will but you know and as far as i'm concerned <laughs> like just keep yeah, whatever whatever Don Mancini and crew does, like that's what I'm interested in seeing. So yeah, if, if they do like a kind of I'm thinking of like a like a Veronica Mars like movie or whatever, that's like their <laughs> their, their their like finale or yeah. something like that. Yeah. Uh, and bring it to, to the theaters. Like sure, uh, after like a cliffhanger um, ending. But I, like I said, I'm 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 much more comfortable seeing it on the small screen because it's just like you have eight episodes. You have eight hours to to tell a story with with all these characters that you couldn't do efficiently in a ninety minute movie. There's two things that you that you made me think about just uh, with what you were you were bringing up, um, and one of them is you brought up Don, Don Mancini and his um, uh, ownership. Uh, I know you're speaking of the property, but. Yeah. For me, uh, that it, it kind of brings me into this movie because another thing that I noticed was maybe a reason why it kind of felt more distinct to the tone that it was going to take from here on out, or at least a tone it was going to continually return to, is because Don Mancini is credited as the sole screenwriter uh, on this movie. And I know ghostwriters can come in, people can punch up things and punch them down and whatever, but uh, at, 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 in large part, he is the voice. You know, he is he is the one continuing the saga because he had to share his credit 
with two other writers, Tom Holland and John Lafia, who directed this one. Um, so maybe there was some collaborative, I don't know, discussion there. Maybe yeah. John Lafia had some input here and there. I have no idea. But um, but seeing Don Mancini credited as the writer and seeing him continue that throughout the rest of the movie saga anyway um, is, is I, I think, a big indicator of the direction that it's going to take from here on out. Um, yeah. And the other thing you made me think about was... Um, I can't remember I was talking too much. It'll come to me. Yeah. But. Well, I, I wanted to say that kind of like, again, like just of this being like the most basic of the Child's Play movies, this one yeah. seems to have like the least amount of backstory slash mythology just in terms of Charles Lee Ray. Like, I don't think that right. we don't learn anything new about him. There's no kind of like indication of like who he was in the in the past. Like in the first movie, we obviously see him as a human and then we see him going and hunting down Eddie Caputo and uh, the, the right. voodoo priest. So we were getting kind of like an idea of his kind of like who he was as a human. Whereas like at this point, it's almost like they've just embraced the fact that no, he is kind of, this is, this is who Chucky is now moving forward. And I, I again, like when we get to the third movie, I'll, I'll have a better, um, understanding of like what what the situation is there because i don't remember a lot of charles lee ray backstory but clearly mm. bride of chucky enter jennifer tilly that's where the mythology starts to really like it's sure. just so rich and like every movie it's like there's more and more introduced with every sequel it's like even like right into the series now that's actually and thank you for bringing that up because you just gave me back what I wanted to talk about. <laughs> the other thing, just as far as like continuing the legacy, I remember Wes Craven being quoted when he was asked about like the sequels to, in particular, he was speaking about the Nightmare uh, on Elm Street saga yeah. and how he felt like, in his opinion, the movies became, the stories within the movies became more and more strained and it was just kind of like going into going into the backstories and broadening them for the characters was kind of not interesting for him. He preferred the mystery. He preferred, you know, that character shrouded in darkness. And the second you start to bring him into the light, he ceases to be scary and becomes something else. Yeah. Something that's successful, but it was, it was a, always a criticism that uh, I think he housed for the direction that franchise took. With this one... Something that I adore about it is, even with this chapter, because I agree with you, there's not there's not really a whole lot more we learn, uh, per se. Or how about this? A whole lot more that's introduced, uh, like, in the way of new information about these characters. Uh, they're kind of the same people they were <laughs> when we left them in the first movie. Yeah. Um, the ones who return. But the thing is... Um, what interests me and why I think so many people respond so strongly to this uh, film, and it is a lot of people's favorite of the franchise, I find, in my uh, exchanges with them. And I think the reason is because it's just the next logical step. And because we get to see that little boy who we cared so much about in the first yeah. movie, he's older now, he's a little bit stronger, he's a little bit, he's not quite so hesitant to take action. Um, but still is a boy and still, you know, it helps when he's got like a, 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 a maternal influence or even in, in the case of Kyle, I guess it's more of a cisternal, sororaternal, I don't know what the word would be, a, 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 a sibling-like <laughs> kind of like dynamic, yeah. a, a familial connection, let's put it that yeah. way. And there's someone, a figure of authority, another uh, a strong blonde woman who is kind of like going, Andy, you know, come this way, telling him, like, go this way, go that way. But if he can jump in and help at any opportunity, um, he, for the most part, is willing to take that chance. Once he makes that yeah. first leap, it's like, okay, now I've got to, like, stick this hose in your mouth. Now I've got to... <laughs> and things, like you know, of yeah. that nature. But, I mean, and, uh, and uh, same thing with Chucky. Like, he's got the same problem, but he's even more exasperated this time, even... I, I feel like he's a little... It's not like he was called calm and cool and collected in the first movie. Yeah. But I'll, I'd be willing to wager money that I think he bellows. That's why I introduced myself with that. Because that's what I associate, particularly the climax of this movie with. Mm -hmm. It's just that long, just suffering bellow that, that yeah. uh, Brad Dourif you know, vocalizes. The thing, <laughs> yeah, like the thing with Chucky, and okay, because there's a few points that you made that I that I want to reference, but like getting back to the first one, it's it. kind of like mm -hmm. connected to, to what you just said. 
of just how Wes Craven, you know, didn't want to delve into backstory. He wanted to just keep the mystique and move forward. And I think that's because, like, Freddy is a terrifying character. Uh, mm. He's a murderer of chi- of children. Uh, whereas, yeah. like, Chucky is, like, he's full-on just this, like, comedic figure. It, like, even in the first <laughs> one, just because of those reactions that he has. Like, I see him more of, like, like he's almost like... Um, I'm just trying, like, like Coyote Roadrunner is like, you know, like, mm. like Andy and, <laughs> and 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 Chucky at this point, where it just like that's his thing, like that's where like the 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 heart of the movie is when you just see him constantly like fail at trying to mm. capture this Roadrunner who's just like uncapturable, <laughs> and it's it's just funny seeing him just get like increasingly more frustrated that he can't kill this kid. <laughs> and that's that's where the comedy comes from and that's why i think that it's with a with a franchise like this it's important to delve into the backstory because the b- because he's so funny chucky you want to like enrich this character with as much like complexity as possible rather than just keeping him a blank ca- canvas and mystique like there's obviously there's certain like like michael myers you don't want to give us backstory on them you want to keep him as mysterious as possible um i think that like that's why you know i don't want to speak to nightmare on elm street too much because it's been a while since i've seen those sequels but you know sure. he freddie did get like really silly uh because of the the backstory that was introduced and, and all that so it kind of went hand in hand Whereas, like, Chucky, it's just, it works. It's just because, like, Chucky is, like, as much as he is the villain, he is a character that we root for to a certain extent. Mm. Like, we, we, we're in his experience for so much. Like, he's the most consistent character in this franchise. So, you know, mm-hmm. he's, he's the one that we're, we're traveling with the most. We want to understand his journey. So it just, it only mm-hmm. makes uh, sense that they would do that. Um, also, uh, you mentioning... Nightmare on Elm Street, <laughs> or yeah, um, there was a lot of homages I, I noticed in this movie, um, yeah. and one of them was uh, the like Freddy coming up from the the sheets because he did the same thing or like Chucky did when Kyle kind of like found the uh, Joanne's body and just like <laughs> fell back on the bed <laughs> and Chucky like ah! <laughs> totally right, got right. totally got the the Freddy Krueger in that so th- there was a lot there was like also like the the peephole in the eye which maybe that was psycho which has definitely been yeah been used in well in, psycho was Psycho is also the moment immediately preceding like the nightmare reference that you you you, you brought up because yeah. um I feel like uh Kyle moving slowly into the space towards Joanne mm-hmm. is uh, Vera Miles moving towards Norma B- Mrs. Bates before yeah. she touches her and, and the slow spin around to reveal yeah. the, you know, oh no, ah, and, I, and everything. Well, yeah, because I guess I forgot, because like once we, like Seed of Chucky, it just feels like, because that movie is so campy, I remember like mm-hmm. all the references, and especially sure. since that was kind of like after the Scream trilogy, that it just like, it was more evident when you would see uh nods to past horror movies whereas like this just because it's older i don't think there were a lot of movies at the time that were kind of homaging things before like there were you know there are things here and there but it was it was always very subtle because it was just like the movies in the 80s uh and like coming into the like the early 90s like that weren't so much concerned with um making callbacks to to past movies as much as they're mm. just trying to like do their own thing i mean i definitely feel more fatigued by it now yeah. than i think i ever did as a kid or as yeah. a teenager but maybe i've just lived too long yeah. i don't know um <laughs> and then the other thing because you were you were just talking about uh alex vincent as andy and i had to say like because I, I don't I remember I criticized him. I don't know if I was criticizing him. I think it was just the character because he was like making that fucking <laughs> breakfast concoction for for his mom in the first movie. But yeah. but just like Alex Vincent in this movie, like considering because what he was like eight or nine uh, in doing this, and like he was really really good for mm-hmm. like as a, as a child actor. Like I I watch Alex Vincent now, you know, in the series like playing Andy Barkley, and it's just like. I'm just glad he's there. You know, that's, the, that's, you know, my, okay. my, my notes, but like, 
as as a child actor, like he he was doing some good stuff, and that's why mm-hmm. it's you know it's it's kind of upsetting that you know where where we go next, um, that he wasn't uh, you know brought back, but uh, definitely like I, he was a big plus for me and not that you know his his role was much smaller in the first movie um so just given the opportunity to to have more to do i think that he rose to the occasion well i mean yeah as the roadrunner per se like he there i feel like there's a lot more opportunities to kind of i don't know if if the term even is have fun um, with <laughs> the, the the bait and switch that Chucky does, the way that Chucky's basically gaslight, not even gaslighting him, but kind of like gaslighting the, everybody else <laughs> as far as like, yeah, think that this can, I mean, because he tried to do that in, in, in the first movie, but it feels like in a much more microcosmic way when you compare it to like how consistently he does it kind of like over and over again, how, how consistently Andy seems to be blamed for things that Chucky has done uh, by multiple people in any environment he may be in. And um, to the point where these, oh God, these foster parents, like it's been said that uh, the Simpsons, uh, Joanne and Phil are the worst foster parents uh, on record Uh, for the first time in any screening, because I always feel that way when I watch it, I always feel like, why are you even fostering children? Like, it doesn't seem like mm-hmm. your heart's in it. I mean, even Jenny Agutter's character, uh, Joanne, seems to be a little bit more, I guess, sympathetic to Andy's plight and everything like that. But the the fact that she turns on a dime <laughs> from, like, you know, thinking, mm, I like him, you know, and all of these just, like, wonderful kind of, like, yeah. oh, you like eggs? You got it. You know, like, all of these wonderful kind of, like, uh, yeah. cliched pleasantries that she's exchanged with him, too. Get away from me! I mean, you know, is, uh... it was a very, I mean, yes, it was a very <laughs> dramatic response, but, I mean, considering the fact that her husband who she's known for who knows how long is laying dead on the basement floor. And this kid who they just brought into their home days ago, who her husband was like warning her about is, is there like, I, because I'm seeing this movie from Andy's perspective, like I get it. Like, it's just like, like you dumb bitch. But at the same time, like it looking at it from her perspective, He's the devil child who, you know, killed her husband. So her response feels authentic to me in that moment. And I don't think that she's a, a bad person. Like, I, I, you know, I, he is absolutely Phil. Um, but her, like, I, I really liked her. And then, like, even, even after she did the whole thing, I was just like, oh, you know, I want them to, you know, get that moment of catharsis afterwards and for her to, like, see the error of her, her, ways and and uh apologize of course that never ha- got to happen but i don't know i don't have the same negative response to 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 her as you did oh i definitely yeah. do because this is another thing that i mean i it always occurred to me before just because also you have to remember like if it is a sick child it's just that it is a sick child that you're <laughs> dealing with he doesn't have a vendetta like he hasn't been plotting this his whole you know all eight of his years that he's been on this earth to like yeah let me you know just stick it to this family if if he's killing people like deliberately at eight years old he's got problems and he a little of that compassion that you were pushing up against with your husband that whole time like maybe now is a good time because kyle is in the same house she's witnessed the same thing she's even been kind of like uh, uh, fallen prey, you know, or victim to like Andy's Kyle's not attached weirdness. to Phil and Joanne though. It's not, <laughs> it's not like, it's not like that was her father who, who. But I, but I feel like her idling her, I just kind of like, well, you know, it sucks that you got to leave, you know, cause I mean, I don't even know what happened, but here, I'm just going to send you off. But the thing is, this is the, this is my point about Joanne. Let me get back to Joanne and fin- complete the thought. Cause the thing that I noticed this time that I never really kind of like jumped on before was the level of fight that they're having. Um, in the in the tracking shot that we described where like they're in one room and then we move down the hallway and there's Andy looking down all sad uh, singing happy birthday to himself in our head canon now but uh, <laughs> but um, I was listening to the, just the way they were talking to each other I, for once I didn't even just think 
why are you why do you bother fostering children i also thought like why are you even in this marriage all the two of you seem to have come from completely different points of view about this it seems like these are conversations you probably should have had before you began the application process to be foster parents i, I wonder it makes me wonder see this is the thing it makes me wonder in my own headcanon like okay what's the story there was she the 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 main engine toward like we could foster and he's just kind of like uh, i don't know well if it'll make the wife happy because that's <laughs> largely kind of the impression i get because it seems like he's reluctant from the well, get-go a, well because there's a line like when it. when andy first comes in and he's looking yeah. at the statuette and yeah. she says oh like my grandmother passed that down to my mother and my mother passed it down to me like it's just been a like a generational heirloom and he's like well who are you gonna pass it down to yeah and and then there's like this awkward silence and she's yes. like why don't you go look at in your room so clearly she's <laughs> she's not able to uh you know conceive of her own child and that's why they're fostering kids and that's probably why she is more um like enthusiastic about this and he hates it because you know he's just like you know i never wanted kids and you know this is kind of like the the easy payoff of like being married and we only have to take care of these kids for like a few months or whatever until they, they Ugh, move on. i see i hate yeah. that i hate that yeah. and also the but also the fact that because uh, that stood out to me this time too just the moment where he's like and who are you gonna give it to and they both treated it like this it was this like offensive remark or just like this thing that must not be talked about and i'm just kind of like well i mean if you're if you're fostering children if you want to eventually adopt and raise a child mm -hmm. chances are you're going to want to give it to the child that you there could have been like a wonderful beautiful moment where it'd just be like um I don't know, I suppose I'll give it to my child. And then they can just kind of, you can just gaze into the child's eyes and just, you know, let them know, yeah. you know, on an almost subliminal level, like maybe that'll be you, you know? But instead it becomes this big, ah, get upstairs <laughs> and don't touch my things. And I don't like I it. Did, well, I that really wasn't don't. how she was. But I, I think that if like this movie no, but that's, made, <laughs> it may like as if, well if, have been. If Don Mancini like wrote those characters uh, of uh, uh, Phil and Joanna, today yeah. they would have been like very campy i would think i mean they're it's hard to say because there were like foster characters they are. In, the, in the in the in the chucky series but i yeah i feel like they're just be like they would be weird because like you know don mancini likes to have like the weird like on like a like almost like a, a, a jennifer tilly level of just like having these side characters who are just kind of kooky um but i think like if there was one instance where i was really kind of annoy because i was never like annoyed by her or like uh, like the way you were uh but with him what pissed me off is when andy goes to his room and then he's like pulls that skateboard down and the the uh tommy doll falls oh, yeah. out and he's traumatized yes. and then she's like she's kind of mortified because she's just like oh i forgot that was even in there like they didn't ha have time to prepare the house for him because they found out the yes. story at the <clears throat> at the orphanage uh as they were taking him home so it's like okay that makes sense that she's like i'm gonna get rid of this and what does phil do he just like closes the door and like goes with her rather than like sitting in there and maybe like being like are you okay you know they're like clearly right. there's something wrong yeah. so he just he just did not want to deal with anything at all um so fuck that guy but um fuck both of them you i agree. mentioned but I, I, think, I, I mean i, I guess i, I like her... jenny jenny uh, how do you say her last name Ag Ag agutor 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 or is it like yeah. agutor <laughs> okay say it however you like sure no, no no i just like is it, maybe it's like german or or something but um uh no mm -hmm. i just well she's uh like horror royalty she's uh american Amer werewolf in london yes, she is i forget the yes, character's name in that movie but um yeah. Yeah, every time I see her pop up in something, I, I get giddy. I know she was in, not that I watch the the MCU movies anymore, but she was she was like in a few of them. I think like uh, particularly she was in the Winter Soldier. She was like one of the uh, yeah, like the big that was the most heavily featured role of hers. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, but uh, getting getting back to what you're saying about like just kind of Chucky and his like gaslighting ways, because I feel that yeah. like now like current chucky and like maybe even like starting as early as like bride of chucky it might have even been the third movie because i don't see him as like being so much as a gaslighter in these first 
two movies. It's more so yeah. that he's just kind of he like he's just there his presence like he doesn't do anything intentionally but everything kind of works out in his favor like he just lucks out that certain <laughs> things are happening because like every and then it's like you know andy is just kind of he keeps digging his own hole because he keeps like blaming chucky not seeing that like you know if he had the presence of mind if he was older to know that nobody no adult is going to believe him to just like zip his mm-hmm. lip and try to think of a different lie to tell them so it's just like it was just a matter of like chucky didn't need to do anything and there was a moment because when um uh when chucky finds the house and then he uh encounters tommy and breaks him over like the or uses the the statuette to like bash the doll and then buries it in the backyard or under the swing and he takes the 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 doll's place in the next scene when andy comes down and i there was a moment for a second because like uh andy flipped him over and checked the batteries and i was just like oh chucky knew to like put batteries in and then i'm like no he didn't because we saw the technicians put them in in the opening scene when they were when they were doing that so so for a second i thought that like okay chucky is like he's adapting he's getting like resourceful and like knowing what what to do in order to like be more successful with each time he comes back to life and i almost wish that they had done that because it would have just it would have made the like chucky Mm. character all the more interesting but i don't know it it is what it is i mean the fact that he was able to track andy down i mean again like you're right he did kind of like have a lot of stuff fall into his lap like for instance greg german's character the 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 kind of uh you know uh what's the word i'm looking for i don't know just like needle nosed kind of the like assistant. you know got the assistant in glasses yeah. who's just like walking around like making things happen and assuring <laughs> the big ceo like uh, you know we've got the doll and we're rebuilding it and everything like that and then whatever the smithers then, why <laughs> yes. Why would Smithers? We'll call him Smithers for the rest because I don't remember his name right now. But uh, sure. Greg Gurman and as Smithers. Why would Smithers um, have all of this confidential information on where Andy is now? If they're only involved, I mean, there's a lot of questions I have about it. But see, this is the thing. It's not a criticism. I am not indicting the movie, saying that would never happen. I'm just kind of going like, oh, that would never happen. <clears throat> With a giant smile on my face yeah. to celebrate the absurdity that begins really, really early in this movie. Yeah. In fact, I think it begins even earlier for me with just the, um, um, it, 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 in all honesty, I think the Universal logo, the fact that we get to kind of see it through its incarnations uh, throughout the 20th century at that point, um just kind of brought me back just in my head, like to a little kind of nostalgia, just to like, you know, the universal monster movies, the classic, you know, Karloff and Lugosi and uh, Lon Chaney Jr., et cetera, of it all. And what I loved was what followed after that, that opening um, was just the, this swell of like the most kind of epic sweeping melody, you know, like, you know, almost like an operatic level by Graham Ravel who um, I, I looked at it. He also scored Bride of Chucky. He did Freddy vs. Jason. He did The Ruins. And he did, he collaborated or contributed at least music to the Planet Terror segment of Grindhouse. Um, so he's, you know, good. That's not, that's not even all he's done. He's done a lot. Way too much for me to list. But I just love uh, this sense that Universal at, at this early stage, still early stage in the franchise, must have had a sense of the Titan impact that chucky already had culturally that like we need to kind of like almost erect a statue to him sonically um because this lush presentation of the of the face and everything like that the reintroduction of it the late 90s were definitely because everything was about like you know michael myers had just come back in in 88 um so it was just like if there if there was some sort of horror icon that was a big deal that people could like right. you know put on a, a pedestal with with the others then they're going to make sure. you know a big operatic deal out of it um yeah because yeah i do i do love that opening of just like it's just like the close-ups of all like the you know it's almost like he's at the dentist and they're like scraping the teeth yeah. and and like spraying the freckles and the the eyebrows on and all that like yeah that that was all really fun um as far as like the what you had first mentioned of just like how smithers would have the uh (laughs) like the information of just like who andy is i actually liked that because 
Yeah. Um, I'm not to say that you didn't, but like it, that worked for me because it was a really efficient way of picking up the story in mm. in a way that just like it it was quick. It told you everything you need to know, and it even if it didn't like make sense, like it did make sense to me because it's just like there's here's this like very powerful organization, like the the CEO. He clearly has a lot of money. He'll throw it at whatever to get his <laughs> underlings to just like take care of the problems or find things out. So it makes sense to me that he would have the details about, you know, Karen Barkley getting thrown in the, the loony bin and the police right. denying everything. And it's just, and it worked. Cause it was like, it was almost like done in a, I, if I recall, like one of those like tracking shots of just like almost like the scream yes. two opening where, yeah. the, you know, the camera Very Warner brothers yeah. moving like <laughs> backwards as like the characters are following it. Um, of just yeah. being like, so anyway, that's all taken care of. And it's just like, great. Mm-hmm. We've we've caught up with everything that we... If you didn't see the first movie, you now know what's going on. And if you did see the first movie and you're wondering why Karen Barkley isn't there, yeah. perfect. Um, yeah. it's, it's all taken care of. Like the movie, this, like I said, this is a lean movie. It's, it's efficient. Everything is done as quickly as possible to just keep the pace going. Mm-hmm. And also there's uh, the, something up to that logic that like they would have access to all this information. I love that it makes uh, play pals kind of like on par with a mafia, <laughs> but also it, it's got an innocence to it. Um, as a kid, I never would have thought twice about, you know, like a detail like that. I'd be like, well, sure, adults probably all have information on everybody, especially corporations. So, you know, so I... I um, and as an adult, it doesn't, it, I don't sit here and go like, oh, well, that would never happen. Mm. It only entices me more so to just kind of give over to, I guess, the high level of uh, fiction that we're moving into to kind of like adapt to it, take to it, and just kind of let, let myself believe it. And I, and I, I, I feel like the, the movie is seductive enough and made with enough love that that, that's really really not a struggle I mean and then again like the fact that Chucky's brought back by electricity um, (laughs) again feels very you know classic and 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 homage and um, and the reintroduction I feel like this and the next movie are the last uh, vestiges of this thing of like it mattering who Chucky or anyone reanimated as a doll, like the first person they present themselves to, that being a factor. I feel like that gets uh, abandoned after this initial trilogy. Um, yeah. And I, I I, kind of forget that it's part of this movie, that that's part of the reason. Again, it's like one of those things where it's part of the reason that's motivating Chucky to continually pursue Andy, um, because he's still the first person he's revealed himself to. But it's also nice to think that if that even weren't the case that coyote wants that roadrunner you know <laughs> and it's just it's 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 yeah. like it's almost an existential pursuit you know <laughs> like, well that's what i matter. love about chucky because because <laughs> first of all like just to, to to touch upon the the mythology changing of like you know how is chucky able to get into the body or, or whatever right. like it has to be this person because i know there's uh in in three there's there's a different boy that you know he's trying to use as his vessel and all I could think, because by the time we get to Bride, because that's when they introduce the uh, the am- amulet of... Uh, Dambala? Some, is it Dambala? Is that what it's yeah. called? I no, but it was, so. was it specifically like the amulet of Dambala or, or something? I thought it was, but... Man, well, we when we get to that episode, we'll, we'll, we'll have a better idea. We'll know what it is. I mean, I could just look up right now, but I'm not. I'm just going to be bothered. Smithers. But, um, <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, it was just like... It, it was almost like he was getting more well versed in voodoo with every entry. Cause I think there was even a, a, a mm. movie where uh, it might've been cult where it's just like, how can you do that? And he's just like voodoo for dummies or just like, I've been, I've been learning. So yeah. it's, it, it's like, that's why <laughs> like, you know, he was stuck before cause he only had like this limited periphery of voodoo. And now he's just like expanded his, his uh, knowledge uh-huh. base of it. Yeah. So just like, he's yeah. able to do more stuff now and just like, yeah, that works for me. That's per- that's all you had to say. Um, and then mm-hmm. what was the other the other thing uh, that you touched on, or just like, oh yeah, uh, just of what his motivations are moving forward? Because it's definitely like the first three are definitely to become human again, and mm-hmm. I think it was in Seed where he's just like he just has that kind of 
um, epiphany of just mm-hmm. like, you know what? You know what? <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> like, I like being Chucky. Um, yeah. And I think from that point on, he's just like, this is who I am. Because he, right. he can do a lot more when people are not suspecting him. Uh, mm-hmm. it just, it just works out. And I, you know, I, I love that. And that's why like, I, I really do love that entry as well that usually gets dumped on, but, mm-hmm. um, yeah. <laughs> okay. Your move. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Um, the camp continues for me with, um, uh, we already kind of addressed it with just like some of the lines that, uh, uh, Joanne utters but i mean because i would argue like you, you mentioned something about like the simpsons in this like not being <laughs> the simpsons and smithers that's funny but um yeah. the, <laughs> we're making it more and more about the simpsons with lisa simpson oh my god how many simpsons references have we made so far we, um, there's smithers anyway. there's the fact that uh they're called the simpsons uh there's uh-huh. the, the lisa simpson for, for singing lisa happy simpson. birthday to herself that might be it but yeah it crazy that that's happening yeah. No, it wasn't intentional. Um, but, <laughs> um, so these Simpsons, uh, Joanne is, is sitting up there with um, Phil. And she, uh, t- t- you said something about like Don Anthony would make them even more camp now, which may- is probably true. But one of the camp things that I get from them is kind of like the schmaltziness of the couple as they're introduced. The fact that like they're in the car and she's asking, so Andy, what's your favorite food? And he's like, chocolate. And they both look at each other and go, <laughs> well, what else do you like? And he's like, eggs. She's like, well, you got no, it. No, no, oh, no, 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 no. He, he said, <laughs> well, my mom used to fix the eggs for breakfast. Right. <laughs> and I was thinking like, I've never heard a child say that like, <laughs> my mom used to fix me eggs and i've never i don't think i've ever used that term maybe it's an american maybe it's thing. a chicago maybe it's a, a chicago, chicago thing i don't know it's chicago, funny that but, this is uh, chicago but it was filmed in pasadena which i like immediately like when they were well, like when he was catching the school bus i was just like where's michael myers like that looks like <laughs> exactly that looks like lampkin lane that we're looking at yeah here. right <laughs> here we are in midtown haddonfield but uh, <laughs> That would be cool. Uh, that I think that's a crossover we'd all welcome. Well, but, I guess like, um, it's just a, a horror thing. Like the the Haddonfield is like a, a suburb of uh, Chicago. Suburb. Yeah. But um, one thing, one of the huge things that I, I adore, and even the emphasis on the word huge, is um, in the moment that I was just describing where they're in the car, where they have to stop, like like you know, really really quickly because this big rig has gotten in the way. And I love the fact that, like, it's just this giant, basically, billboard on the side of this uh, 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 18-wheeler. And you just see uh, the face of the good guy doll just there. Like, ah, yeah. like the, the, <laughs> the very cartoon, even, image of the good guy doll, which we first saw Andy in the, in, in the original movie going, wow, and everything. <laughs> and, um, being, and, and knowing the show so well that, like, in, a fir- in the first few seconds, I saw saw this one already and um do you remember that now, fucking that like life-size like good guy doll it yes. was like the the the, the uh what would you barney call it? Of- it, yeah it was almost like a barney <laughs> thing. It, it was so creepy that was the creepiest thing of, yeah. of the child's play movies by far oh and that's that's what they looked like in the 80s too yeah. but like if uh, you went to chuck e cheese <laughs> yeah exactly exactly <laughs> or uh, out in front of like out here in front of uh, the Grauman's Chinese Theater, and you have all of these like uh, uncopyrighted costumes that are shabbily put together of like Elmo and Mickey Mouse and everything like that, and they're terrifying looking, but they still manage to make money. If you're one of those people, no offense, but you know the costumes, you know, come on. Anyway, uh, <laughs> but what I love about that giant visage of the mm-hmm. good guy uh, at just kind of passing in the reflection across Andy's face and I just clasped my hands together going like oh my gosh this is so camp because it's 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 and again the true meaning of camp meaning it's like overtly dramatized to the point of ridiculousness but that doesn't mean that the filmmaker or that the way it was positioned is you know being dismissed or thrown away there is a lot of calculation and thought about what the image is going to be in capturing that shot and yeah. it pays off because I laugh with a kind of sad <laughs> um, outlook for 
Andy for the rest of this movie, knowing you're eternally going to be haunted, kid. I mean, it, it, it's an answer to the final moment of the original movie where he just looks over his shoulder like he's always, he's never going to forget. He's always going to be pursued by something. And this just kind <laughs> of like doubles down on that. It's his trauma. <laughs> <laughs> Um. <laughs> you know what? Maybe back if they ever do go back to a movie, they, they just make a like a, a Child's Play twenty eighteen. <laughs> like Andy's like just lives in like on this compound in the middle of nowhere, just like shooting dummies and shit because because of the trauma <laughs> that he endured <laughs> forty years earlier. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we already kind of have that a little Wait, bit. Yeah, like well, he, in, like, uh, our, in, in our own Andy. Yeah, yeah, I know, but you mean the reboot. Yeah. That would be funny. I mean, at, at least that's leaning more into the tone that would be, you know, inviting <clears throat> to me. But, um, oh, because another, okay, another thing that I think I dislike, a reason why I dislike and why I'm coming down so hard on Joanne versus Phil, because Phil is outright a villain in this movie. He's there, I don't feel like there's pretty much anything redeeming about this guy. But I think the reason why Joanne bothers me is because her aggressions even early on feel like microaggressions. Mm. Like the fact that when she brings uh, Andy into that hideous house of theirs, we didn't even discuss that. The horrible color scheme, everything is either pink or blue. And they've got that dizzying wallpaper (laughs) that, you, you know, if you look at it too quickly, your eyes will just start dancing back and forth and you'll probably pass out. Um, you know, you'll, you'll, you'll shake a little bit and just go, go completely unconscious. But Mm -hmm. the fact that she gets him into his room and she's talking and she's talking to him about all these wonderful things that are on the horizon for him. And then just goes, uh, um, you know, and I, I, I designed this room special for you or whatever she says, I'll bet blue is your favorite color. And I'm like, well, why don't you try asking him? Like sitting here, that's very, I mean, again, not to get into 2023 with my terminology on there, but how heteronormative are you, bitch? I mean, and also it made me wonder if she, three weeks earlier when she brought Kyle up to her room, just said, I bet pink is your favorite color. And it's like, can you even see me? You know, I just, anyway, she yeah. gets me. She just gets me. I think that <laughs> if there was one other instance, I'll give you, because I'm just like, I, I, don't get the Joanne hate that you do. But when she's reading um, Andy the Bedtime Story and and then she's just kind of like, okay, I'm done with this or whatever. And like, we'll pick this up tomorrow. And yeah, that was kind of rude. But I, what I get from <laughs> Joanne is more of like, yeah. I think she's afraid of Phil um, because there is, mm. when they do go into, when uh, we meet Kyle and she's smoking and then Joanne goes in there and she's kind of like, she's okay with Kyle smoking. Like she doesn't have like a mm. problem with it, but she's just like, sure. if Phil catches you, like, you know, whatever she says. Yeah. So I just think that like, she's more so just like, she's almost like an enabler to Phil and it's, yeah, she doesn't necessarily um, have the same ideology that, that he does, but she is like afraid of what he might do to the children <laughs> or to her if like if one thing because I, I going back to it, i i truly believe that this was, this was like a, like a caveat that she was allowed to have it's just so they could like have foster children and it was almost like her being like i like andy and just like really vouching for him it yeah it might not be for andy in particular but just her ability to continue having this close bond with with by fostering children that if something if like an andy type came in that kind of like turned everything uh over on its head that that might Mm -hmm. be the inciting thing for phil to just be like that's it i'm putting my foot down no more fosters or you know something like that (laughs) 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 so i think i think that that's what it comes down to like if i really had to like psychoanalyze these the simpsons i think that that's Mm -hmm. what's going on there i think that joanne is like she's kind of torn in like between both sides of it like she wants to to be this foster parent but at the same time it's like she knows that she's got to like basically phil is like another child to her and she needs to you know make sure that his needs are met first before she can meet the needs of the other children 
I totally agree with that point. However, her... That's another thing. I, I question her own desire to foster or what's motivating her to foster in the first place because I'm glad you brought up her reading to him because that was another thing. She can't read bedtime stories for shit. She's sitting there. She's holding the book open and she's it's, it's incredibly flat. She's not doing any voices. There's no enthusiasm, but there's not even like a soothing, calming instance. She feels like... It seems like it's just a chore. She can't wait to get over. Like, when is this kid going to fucking go to sleep she's almost and she's almost reading it as though she's reading like she's got some ikea instructions she may as well be reading and just going like slot a <clears throat> goes into slot b and two people made necessary for this i mean she is so checked out and that's another thing that just makes me think like i mean this should mean something to you and like this is a precious moment like having you know your 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 foster child like you know the the, the, the room that you made and the bed that you 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 uh prepared for this child is now finally occupied and you have the opportunity to open a book and read them to sleep and you're just sitting there going <clears throat> all right uh well we'll, we'll finish this tomorrow whatever later bye and uh, what about and the, the nice thing things I... she does for him like remember when she <laughs> when he runs out the door and and she's like oh don't forget your lunch i may i fixed you egg salad because because he likes eggs. <sighs> i know it's gross, gross. but he likes it it's... And it's nobody. Maybe there was a chocolate more. bar. Maybe there was a chocolate bar in there. <laughs> well, that should have been the line instead, because all I can think yeah. is that egg salad's going to be spoiled by the time he gets yeah. to, to to lunch. I was more wondering, like, where was his backpack? Like he just, like, yeah, right. Yeah, he had nothing. I mean, first I couldn't even imagine, school. like, because yeah, his first day of For school, him. like, he didn't have anything. But just like, how long is he going to be at that school? Clearly, right. he's never going back, and I'm I'm curious, like, what <laughs> happened after, like, they find the, the dead teacher <laughs> the next day anyway? Like, I always think of, like, where, because, I mean, the end of the movie of just, like, are we going home now? Or just, like, whatever the thing is, just, like, where's home? Yeah. And like, I have no idea. And just, like, realistically, yeah. what are they going to do? Like, they can't go back to the orphanage because uh, Grace mm. uh, Zabriskie... <laughs> is dead Grace. love her let's talk about her in a minute but like you know they can't oh, yeah. go back to the simpsons um they can't go any like they're basically fucked at that point they can't go to the police so yeah. i just imagine like it would it would be nice to like think that at that point like andy and kyle just kind of go off and like start their own life somewhere like she's kind of like you know she's working she's banned. saving up money <laughs> Oh yeah, they could start, start their a band. Own band. I could see them in a band. <laughs> she's into that drum machine yeah. like synth shit that she's listening to when we first meet her. Yeah. But, um, <laughs> As Andy yeah. like reads poetry. <laughs> right. <laughs> they could be beat poets together. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I I would yeah. totally I would buy a ticket. Yeah. But um I also cuz I'm uh, okay, there's so much to address, but okay. Cuz Another thing that like pisses me off just about The Simpsons. Sorry to harp on it, but I, I need to move past this. This is an important thing. All right. The the statue that you mentioned that Chucky breaks that he frames like Andy for like you know like breaking everything without even knowing he didn't even know how important it was. Yeah. It just happened to kind of like, like I work said, in his it's just everything was it's... accidental. But like the statue, if the statue was, I just feel like there should be like uh, there's another line I hear in my head where it's just like this statue, you know, belonged to my grandmother and went to my mother and it was that way, and it's so important to me. That's why I basically keep it at the foot of the stairs. I mean, it's a miracle it's lasted this long that just sitting there like underfoot, like near a stairwell, like like it, you're you're lucky it broke when it did. You fucking dumbass i get i'm sorry i get really incensed about this about these two. Um, <laughs> because i really care about andy and because i do believe uh, there's there's a warm feeling i actually get maybe i should be more bleak at the end when kyle and andy are just kind of like walking away aimlessly like not knowing what the next course is but i don't because even though i know what follows in the next movie um i feel like he's with the person he needs to be with yeah. at the end of this they movie, have each you know? other like, you know they they might have yeah. nothing but they have each other yeah and i would and, just imagine they probably went back to the simpsons house because nobody has found what's her face dead yet and probably <laughs> um like took their stuff that's another like who's gonna get framed for that murder now like it's not that i'm like all kind of like pointing out nitpicks and inconsistencies with the franchise because i like just 
that's just the thing. That's just the nature of like adults in these movies. And that's, that's why, I mean, I don't want to like show my bride of Chucky hand too soon, but just like how yeah. like the, those movies that <clears throat> were more like adult centric, like the, the um, protagonists were adults. It just, it just felt like this isn't interesting to me because the adults are stupid and I don't want to see like stupid people who, who like we know more about this, what's going on in the story than they do. Whereas I feel like, <clears throat> like children are so much more perceptive in the Child's mm-hmm. Play franchise, and they make better protagonists. So mm. it's, but at the same time, it's just like they're not like the adults are so, are that ignorant that they would never suspect like the children of being like murderers either. They just be like, well, this is just an unsolved murder. Someone broke in here and slit her throat after the husband had an unfortunate fall down the stairs, or like whatever they, <laughs> whatever the police, you know, come up with. i mean i maybe that's i mean i don't want to talk too much about like child's play 3 but what i will say in the transition to that movie um because i don't think it's a spoiler saying it takes place mostly at a military academy where andy's going yeah maybe he was like you know going to he was on a path that was going to take him to some kind of like juvenile center or something like that and maybe in the time that it took him to age to the age that he is in three um he had been through enough analysis for them to realize there's not there's clearly nothing really wrong with him he just kind of believes this one thing and all of the evidence against him is circumstantial so there is a case to be made why that he might not be violent these may not have been committed by him so maybe yes maybe we need to keep him in a place where he's going to be taught control self-control like a military academy let's put him there and maybe that's why he ended up there i don't know but um head cannon head cannon are you <laughs> do you have more shit to say about the simpsons why don't you harp on the the ceo guy who's clearly like the devil <laughs> <laughs> but i mean you can give him a pass surprised by that i mean every every ceo in every 90s he's like the, movie well he can be the mr burns in this uh scenario right <laughs> But I mean, I feel like every CEO, even whether he wanted to or not, was like an instrument of evil. It was just kind of like either he either he doesn't care enough and doesn't give a shit about people, just wants to cover his ass legally, or he he cares, but he's just he just doesn't know. That's just too far down the ladder for him to give a shit. And I'm thinking like Daniel Clamp and Gremlins too. But um, and I feel like those are basically like the two examples that we got like throughout the '90s of like you know the big corporate head you know uh, uh emphasis on the fucking head but um no the only thing i can think i i could think is kyle does defend the simpsons at one point to andy when death um, to her and I- <laughs> <laughs> how dare she but she's because i mean she and even goes so far to defend i think it's specifically phil yeah and just goes like uh eh, he's not so bad but maybe she says they're not so bad i can't remember but she says she says something about I mean, them not being he's so not bad, so bad basically Right. Because yeah. he's like, and, Mr. Um, Simpson and, doesn't like me very much. Whatever. Right. <laughs> yeah. And she's just like, eh, he's not so bad. She's, and she <laughs> talks about, she alludes to the other places where, you know, they that what they would do to you if you just looked at them wrong or anything like that. And I'm like, how fucked must the system be if, like, Kyle can be in an environment like that and be like, it's not that bad. Believe me. Like, that makes me, that makes me sad for her. That makes me glad that she's going to be on her own next year. Um, yeah. But, <laughs> um, <laughs> Uh, as far as, like, anything else that they have, like, all I can say is, like, when Phil is taken out, I'm really, really glad that at least we get to see him see that Andy wasn't lying or delusional or even a psychopath, that it was all true. Before How's it he... hanging, Phil? Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> uh... See, we don't get that kind of satisfaction with... Yeah. Um, with Jenny Agutter's role with Joanne, because like all we see is that face that she made. I think based on because <laughs> she... like she well she had like something wrapped around her, so I'm pretty sure that she met Chucky. You know, there had to be some sort of exchange there that she's just like, holy shit, he was right. 
that he was like on the 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 sewing machine, the white rotary. Yeah. Oh, which I saw that I was like a white rotary sewing machine. Isn't that the same one that like Carrie's mom uses in um in Carrie uh, that Margaret White uses? And I always thought it said white rotary on it just yeah. because she wanted it personalized. And now I'm like, no, there yeah. must have actually been a brand white rotary yeah. sewing machine. Anyway, I thought that was exciting. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> Ch- he, Chucky kind of reveals himself to everyone because even like with uh, uh, Grace right. I, and I forget her name, but he's just like. Amazing, isn't it? <laughs> like, that, that might actually be like the funnier one because, like, the, the how is it hanging, Phil? Like, that's that's a very cathartic moment. But I just love how he's just like with his little hands and the scissors. <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> um, oh, but she's that was another thing. Like, she's yeah, great. Go like, on, she's there. She's in so much too because she's uh, obviously like Beth Grant. For... What? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Is that Beth Grant? Is the actress's name? The, the, wait, are you talking about the teacher? No, I'm talking, talking about, about the 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 foster. Uh, oh, oh, okay. You are talking about Grace Zabriskie. Okay, cool. Yeah, yeah. Love her. Yeah. No, Love I don't know who too. this teacher is. Yeah, yeah. No, Grace. Oh, like, yeah. Cause, no, she's, cause, a big she's in everything. Too. Like she was in The Grudge. Yeah. Uh, Twin, Twin Peaks. Peaks. Love her in in the, in that. She was also in the revival. Yeah. Um, she was. Um, uh, if you watch Seinfeld, she was. Um, Susan, like George Costanza's fiance's mother. Right. <clears throat> Remember? Yes. Perfection. And there's the whole thing when the Costanzas brought the bread over from like the bakery yeah. and they're just like, they didn't touch the bread. So like the, the dad like yes. took it home and then they're like, where's that loaf of bread? Did they take it? Like they were so, <laughs> she was so, well, because he was like a closet homosexual and she knew it and they would just like throw it. Right. They'd have like those really awkward dinner parties. And <laughs> yeah. Yeah. She's great. There was also... I love her in everything I've seen her in. Yeah, me too. And I love I love her energy in this because she's another one. She and Kyle, I think, are the only ones who seem to be like even remotely sympathetic to Andy's plight after Phil buys the farm yeah. and um, <laughs> you know falls and dies. I know it, but um, because yeah. I just like the way she talks to him because there's nothing accusatory in her tone. She doesn't even look like she's suspecting him. It's just this wonderful energy of just kind of like. Well, you know what? You know, Kyle's been in a lot of homes too. We'll find another one for you. Don't worry. Like, but then all... that last moment when she, <laughs> when the fire alarm goes off, and she kind of like manhandles Andy. She like pulls him by the arm, like into her office. Mm-hmm. Well, I, I didn't like it, that. at that moment. She's been. Uh, she didn't plan to be up li- that late that night. I love how you like make certain <laughs> uh, <laughs> excuses for people and like. Of let's course. talk about the. T- okay, That's let's what talk we about do. The, let's talk about the teacher. <laughs> Um, the teacher is played by Beth Grant, who has um, a whole uh, bevy of, uh, I mean, she has got one of those character actress careers where she's basically in everything, but a lot of people might recognize her from Donnie Darko. She's in that new um, series um, that has the actress whose name I can't remember right now, the one who was in Texas Chainsaw 3D. Uh, do you remember? The, well, what's the series the called? Just tell me the... Uh, it's called Mayfair Witches. It's on AMC oh, Plus. No, you I, won't know what it is. I don't know. Anyway, and the, but she's oh, on that uh, right now. Alexandra Daddario. Yes, her. Yeah, yeah it's her series. Yeah. She's on it with her, and she's all. But the thing that I know her from the most, I think, is Tu Wong Fu. Thanks for everything, Julie Newmar. She's one of the women in the town that gets a makeover and gets to romp around in like that '60s regalia. Anyway, um, and she's Miss Kettlewell in this. And I love that she's she is essentially a horrible teacher in my eyes mm-hmm. who kind of just wants to blame. I, I, I've had that teacher, too, where they don't care about justice. They just want to blame someone for disruption yeah. in the class. So they just kind of nail the student that's like, you know, that they don't like. It's an that abuse they of dislike power. The most. Yeah, she's she's, she's yes. power hungry. that whole thing. It's just like, you know, like, uh, you know, you should be more focused on getting on my good side or whatever she Oh, bullshit she says yeah. and what about that other that fucking kid too behind it like he's just a oh. straight up bully he was the one that pushed him on the bus oh, well a lot of kids I mean yeah. yeah the kid pushed him on the bus but then kids were also throwing shit at him and giving him dirty looks the whole time to the point where he had to just kind of almost sequester himself like yeah. a, his own jury like in the back corner of the bus and just kind of like isolate and I was what like what did he say I don't him re- when I- he flicked he called him like a microchip what was the line yeah uh, I don't. I, I, that's the only part that I remember. That's the only part that I remember. He's like, "Get lost, microchip." I think Something is the like, line. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but uh, the fact that he calls him a microchip. I mean, he could have said a lot of other things that would be yeah. a lot more damning. I mean, at that point, that he, he may as well just like have used every 
expletive in the in the dictionary or not the dictionary yeah. because that fucking teacher was going to reprimand him no matter what yeah that actually that, um, okay because that... you did mention like yeah. chucky gaslighting he did do the thing with the the uh fuck you bitch and the the yes. drawing so <laughs> so there's that he gets to yeah. have a lot more fun yeah yeah but um, also the fact that, like, I've, I've heard it over and over again stated by people on different pods, panel discussions, and uh, uh, other formats, reviews, what have you, like, content that, like, discuss this movie. And it's a lot of younger people who might not have been old enough to remember the 90s and who wonder, like, wow, I guess that's just a, a thing of the time. Like, back in the 90s, nobody cared. A teacher could lock you in a classroom. And I remember... Even as a minor watching that, like, you know, not too long after it had been released, like in the mid 90s, um, thinking, no, that's fucked up. No, 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 no. That <laughs> teachers weren't allowed to do that then. Maybe back in the 1950s, maybe. I don't know. You got to ask yeah. somebody who was alive during the 1950s. Well, I mean, it's a, but... regardless of whether, <laughs> because, like, look, I've had sociopathic teachers, like, right up sure. to like grade 12. Um, so yeah. it just like people, they might not have been allowed to, but that doesn't mean that they wouldn't do right. something if, if they felt that they could get away with it. And, you know, the one in particular that I had definitely, he, um, knew that, you know, he intimidated uh, enough of his students that, you know, he didn't, but I could see, mm -hmm. I could see a Kettlewell type just like locking their student in there and just like having no regard <sighs> for, protocol or safety like if that school caught on fire and there's a kid trapped in, exactly. the, in the classroom that's locked like they're dead i went on like a field yeah. trip once in, in my school and mm. i remember that they like almost <clears throat> left me there like they almost forgot me like if it wasn't for my me just like kind of having the presence of mind to be like oh i like nobody's like called me to like go back to the school bus and i just kind of went on my own and sure enough everyone was like kind of like loading back onto it and i just like you know you forgot about me and they're just like oh okay well get on get on you know like i almost wish that i had stayed oh, behind and just gotten God. them in trouble you got home alone almost, <laughs> almost <yeah. laughs> but not the opposite you got field tripped alone yeah more like home but, alone yeah, too wow like, uh lost in <laughs> New lost York. in Toronto. <laughs> but, <laughs> yeah, lost in Toronto, wherever the yeah. field trip was. But um, I will say, though, yeah, I agree. I, Miss Kettlewell, like, has a lot going against her. She even has, okay, I always get a kick out of it, but because I don't, I still don't know what it means. So I don't know if it, if it occurs to you at all, but, like, when she's in the closet thinking Andy's in there. Yeah. And she's, like, looking for him, you know, like, behind, like, the coats and stuff like that and doesn't find anything. And we've got all the suspense music and everything, the dramatic stings. And then... The ball falls on her, and she's like, ah! and then she looks down. She has this incredible moment where she kind of like grins to herself, and she kne she like bends down and picks up the ball and looks at it, and she's still got this little grin. And I think it's supposed to be a kind of like, I like I, I don't know, like I should have known, or oh, <laughs> scared of a ball. Like I don't know what that moment, but it's so it's so creepy. It's a tiny. Yeah minute little grin on her face and she just kind of puts the ball back on the shelf and that's when he gets her yeah. um and impales her with uh that thing i don't what is that thing that he it's impales like a her with? it's like a, 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 a basketball air pump oh thing, yeah. okay see sports completely lost on me <laughs> but <laughs> so uh but again i love the fact that she gets to see the doll and kind of realize oh shit i i might have punished andy in error i might have made an error in judgment and now i've deprived myself of you know maybe the only other person who might be able to help me but i've made him afraid of me so now i'm just gonna get destroyed with by this yardstick i love that it's a yardstick <laughs> too that he just, he's just yeah. <laughs> the kills are more I, I feel like the kills are more fun in this movie like well, the, he, he's a little bit more enterprising well he's involved in them too like the kills in the first movie were most of them were done uh, with that, like, almost like the Pamela Voorhees mystery of just, like, we don't know who's killing. Right, Because right, it's never right, showing right. him doing, like, when Aunt Maggie gets the hammer in the face, yes. it's, just, it's more of, like, yes. a, like, a POV shot almost. So, yeah. it's, yeah, he's more involved in it. There's more animatronics, puppetry, and one-liners, too, you know? It's, Brad Dourif is getting to, you know, flex his uh, his his voiceover talent. 
Yeah. What What do you think your reaction would be if the last thing you saw before, or not like not because you don't know you're going to die, but like yeah. you just kind of like turn around because creepy shit's happening, and then the most unlikely of things happens, and you turn around and there's a doll with kind of an evil face grinning at you. What is what it? What would you do? What would is your reaction it, be? Is it trilogy of terror? Where she oh br- she like Karen Black back. with the little doll yeah and it's like I I it's don't like think I've seen it it's in an, an yeah. entirety but it's like the whole thing is like this doll like chasing her around her apartment trying to this kill her last segment and it, yeah, yeah like it, it just keeps going and going and going like and she's just like freaking out and I I mean I yeah. think that that would be me probably just like oh no oh, like just continuously trying to dodge it. Uh, and like panicking or I could like fall backwards and then just like laugh almost like as if like I've kind of like accepted my death and it's like funny and <laughs> just be like <laughs> <laughs> like you know like uh, kind of like out of breath and, but still laughing at the absurdity of the whole thing because it's it, it is pretty ridiculous that a doll is about you to kill and you. Joan of Arc just like Joan of Arc but um <laughs> <laughs> But um, yeah, I don't. I I feel I worry that I'd be a lot more like Aunt Maggie, just stunned and just stand there and to and just whatever just happens, paralyzed happens. with fear. Because I wouldn't know how to compute something like that. How yeah. do you? I mean, even after watching all of these movies, chances are it wouldn't be a good guy doll. If it were a good guy doll, I'd probably be like Chucky. But <laughs> it's, if it were just a doll, would you rather get? Would doll? you rather get killed by Chucky or Tiffany? Who? Ooh. I gotta say, Tiffany's inventiveness sometimes. <laughs> Cause I I I I feel like I couldn't not admire Tiffany while she's killing you. I feel so that I like, think I'd rather be killed. I feel that like Tiffany would kill you, but she would also respect you at the same time. Whereas like I feel like Chucky just like does not give a shit about who he kills. And it's just like it's almost like for him, it's almost like it's it's just like he's he's killing you because he hates you. Whereas like Tiffany is just like she's killing because she likes it. You know, it's it's it it's you know how she <laughs> she gets her rocks off. And it's or almost like it's almost like thank you for this sacrifice. <laughs> we are about to enjoy. <laughs> <laughs> well, also I guess it depends on like what stage Tiffany because yeah. like you know. Well, no, I would definitely rather Tiff- be murdered more by doll. More recent Tiffany is much more fucked up. Yeah, I'd I'd rather be <laughs> murdered by doll Tiffany than like than like Jennifer Tilly Tiffany because like because right. she is scary. I also prefer yeah. Tiffany as Jennifer Tilly, but. Um, if, if, if it had to be the doll, like I'm, I might agree with you, like Tiffany. If, yeah. If the doll killed me, like if I got to like look up in t- at the mirror that hangs over my bed in the hotel suite that I have and <laughs> see her just in time to see her sitting, standing there with a champagne bottle and throw it up and have the shards fall on me. That'd be pretty cool. Yeah. I'd be like, whoa, this is so iconic. And then I would die. But uh, anyway, we're getting off topic. <laughs> um, but in terms of the killing, like that's another thing. It's not even, it's not a Chucky kill, but it's, I mean, not yet, but everything that leads up to Phil's kill. Um, I, I really appreciated this time uh, in a way that I didn't really articulate to myself before. Andy, when he grabs that, um, that whirring electric knife. Yeah. Because I wondered... If it was screen written to be like an electric knife, um, because I I feel like an electric carver adds humor because it's not as imposing as like I feel uh, like a Michael Myers like kitchen knife or anything like that, but it's also like a little chainsaw, like a tiny little child chainsaw. Yeah. <laughs> but the fact that Phil says like Andy, put down the knife. I mean, it is a knife, but the fact that he doesn't say, like, put down the carver or something like that, that he calls it a knife, makes me think, like, in the script, it might have just simply been a knife. And then maybe John Lafia thought, like, well, we have a kid walking around with a knife. That's kind of dark. But what if we make it, like, one of those little, you know, like, one of those, like, toothbrush or knives, yeah. you know, <laughs> like, electric toothbrush. Um, I always also I wonder thought, like, maybe I was. just, like, was misremembering. Like, I thought maybe that there was more to... Like Andy's interactions with and like punishment by the Simpsons because I I seem to recall, which I guess never mm. happened is because he like sticks the thing into the the linens and in, in the the dryer and just starts like cutting through them, and it made me think of oh there's a scene yeah. coming up where where like Joanne's like 
opens the sheet and there's like all these holes in it. Just like Andy. Yeah. You know. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, but on this, it had been like on top of of Phil dying. It's just like you also ruined my sheets. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's that's one thing. I was surprised that here and there there weren't a few more kind of like takes to the camera, which again makes it kind of like true camp to me because I don't feel like they tried for every single laugh they could get. There are some good ones, though. Like I still I I can't help myself but chuckle uh, and, ju- and, ju- and just throw my hands back behind my head in ecstasy every time. Ecstasy. Uh, ecstasy. Every time. Uh, Andy finds Chucky in the place of Tommy and he tells him, he tell, I don't remember what he, he curses at him or something. He's like, well, like, I hate you or something like yeah. that. Is that what he says? I, and then he just goes, hi, I'm Tommy. I think it was uh, even longer <laughs> pause than that. The end. <laughs> hi, <Dee-ho>. <laughs> <laughs> The <laughs> eyes even like, but just, they make the sound as they shift. <laughs> yes, I, that yeah. is amazing. <laughs> and And then the fact that like, I think the the next uh, scene after he's like punished for uh, destroying the little ceramic thing, he's out on the swing, swinging over the grave of Tommy, (laughs) (laughs) which I noticed a lot of people don't notice it the first time they see the movie. I did. And I remember laughing my ass off Mm -hmm. because of the irony of the situation, like the fact that like the evidence is literally right under your nose, Andy. And we're we as the audience are the only ones who know it. And of course, Chucky sitting off in the distance watching you scrape back and forth, watching you push Kyle on the swing and watching her scrape back and forth and the eyes widen. I I love that. They really like glossed over that part of the movie because it was like almost right away that, you know, he arrived and that happened. And then that night he like Chucky ties Andy up to the bed. It's just like, we're doing this now. So I almost would have appreciated like more moments, like more family dynamic moments of like, you know, we could have even got a birthday thing or, you know, just just any like seeing them have dinner because like obviously dinner was such an important part of that family where just like, you know, we getting telling Kyle that she couldn't go to work because they needed to, her to like be yeah. involved with the family or something. Like it, there's a lot that was kind of missed that I, I think that like maybe like five more minutes could have been added to the screen time of just interactions with that family just to kind of see, yeah, get a, just mm-hmm. get a better vantage point of just like how lonely the situation was for, um, for Andy. Not that I don't think that they established that, but I just, it mm-hmm. would have been nice to just like get more out of, out of the Simpsons and just like the, the dynamic there rather than just like, maybe just to like understand their perspective a little bit more. Cause like Phil's just like automatically maybe. like hates him, but it's just like, if there was more reason, like if, if there was more gaslighting that Chucky did and more setup of them, like, you know, having these issues. Cause even that, like the thing with the teacher where she calls them, and says that like Andy drew an inappropriate thing or whatever at school because then they're just sure. they're talking about it with him when he comes home. Yeah. But it's just like even that scene felt very rushed. Like there wasn't there wasn't a lot to it. It was just like we need to move on to the next the next stage and the next stage. And if there's one part of the movie that maybe dragged a little for me because I think that this is still like a very efficient movie, like much more than the first one, is <clears throat> probably like the. The interim of like Kyle getting to the to the foster home because it was just like a lot of like them sitting in the car and driving and it's almost like we've seen this scene before where it's just like he reveals himself to like another human and there's like these mm. conversations that have to be had. And a question that I had is like, why does Chucky now, I, I mean, I guess they could say that it was like a time constraint that he had to get into Andy's body quicker. But it's just like now all of a sudden he needs to depend on Kyle to take him to Andy because Andy should know where the or sorry, uh, Chucky should know where the uh, the orphanage is if he was like able to find out the phone number and, and call them. So but maybe it's a matter of getting there faster if he has a chauffeur than trying to like. Yeah. You know, hop, I, hop, 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 I, I mean, hop I on, guess a, so. on an automobile that seems to be. Yeah, I guess so. But it was just like all the, he, the, the stuff with just getting was, pulled over by the police and all that. It just felt like, OK, yeah. now we're going to like slow this shit down. Just, you know, to not and not that it was like wasted time because we did get like the 
Um, what I love, because you, you were talking about the, uh, hi, I'm Tommy. I love when the cop's like, yeah. hey, buddy, what's your name? And he's just like, Chucky. <laughs> like, he's just yeah. not even <laughs> <laughs> And then when the cop sees, like, the, the, the nose running and he's just, he's just like, hey, what's going on there? And she's just like, you seen dolls that pee? <laughs> this one pleads. I just <laughs> I love watching Kyle because also we get more time with Kyle yeah. um, because we've only kind of seen her through Andy's eyes, which is great. But I mm. like seeing her have an opportunity to exude something akin to Final Girl energy yeah. because I love the fact that she's definitely shocked that there's a living doll, but it doesn't. She's <laughs> also actually also fascinated. There's the point where he's like right there by her head while she's driving, holding the knife yeah. to her. And explaining why you know why he needs her, but why you won't hesitate to kill her or whatever, and she just kind of like looks at him. He's like, "What?" Because yeah. <laughs> she's she's kind of fascinated by the fact that like, wow, how does this? How does this? Like, she's trying to figure it out as much yeah. in the way I think I would be if he were standing across from me. That's why I kind of um, I liked in the in the series when. Uh, when like he reveals himself to Jake and he's like, I'm sure you're wondering yeah. like how I got this way or so, or I think he right, said right, like, how right. did you become like this? And he's like, well, it's a long story. Yes. And, and then starts to explain it. And, and Jake's like, no, no. Like, how did you go become like a murderer? Which I thought was like, mm -hmm. Oh wow. And it was almost like Chucky's just like, nobody's asked me that before. It's like, you know, like... <laughs> um, but yeah, cause, so with that, I mean, this might have been because I'm just trying to think like the stuff with Karen in the first movie, like that was like the like, if you don't talk, I'll throw you in the fire. Just like you stupid yes. fucking bitch. And like, all that <laughs> you filthy slut. Yeah. You think you I'll teach fuck you to mess me. with me. Yeah, yeah right. Um, <laughs> we're just, it, it just felt it, it just maybe seemed a little reductive to me like in this movie to just like you know go through that again with kyle and like i like kyle like i like the um uh christina lease and just like uh, like you said like building her up as this final girl but there's just something about like andy you know being taken by chucky and they're like in the back of the the news truck with like the right he's trying to do the thing there and she's kind of like yeah. driving alongside like that was just kind of like generic action to me that just like wasn't interesting uh. and then like when she gets in front of the guy and he comes out and he's just like what's wrong with you lady you're crazy you're and she's like shaking her and she's just like yeah. get off of me and like what was yeah, the right. I, it would have been better if they just got to the factory sooner and just you know Minor well, I mean, gripe. I, uh, minor well, gripe. Minor, because I, I I would also argue that at that point, like she's in the same position that Andy and Karen are. That like people are looking at her, thinking, "What the fuck is wrong with you? You're, you're losing your mind," you know. And yeah. to be inaugurated into the uh, the uh, in the know about yeah. Charles Lee Ray and all of his exploits, at least insofar as that. He does pose a threat and he is real. That's basically all she knows. Yeah. Um, but um, to know even that much, it's almost like being inducted into a family where people are going to be looking at you like there's something off about you. So I kind of appreciate that. I also like the fact that like Chucky in the back of the truck like flips her off and she just has this reaction. It's a very subtle reaction that Christina Lee offers as Kyle, but it's just kind of like a what like or it's like half disbelief and half like rude fucking doll you know to allude to <laughs> bride of chucky but no i mean it's just like what the fuck is wrong with you <laughs> like you're the one who's doing something wrong shithead like i i i appreciated that yeah. and i like the set piece i like the sheer size of the factory the fact that uh, they all end up back there, this most unattended, unsurveilled that. factory. Yeah. <laughs> I love that there's, like, another, speaking of homages, the whole, yeah. like, going through the, the maze of the uh, the, the Chucky uh, good guy box is, is basically yeah. The Shining, uh, going through the, the yeah. maze of <laughs> Wendy and, and, and Danny. It's um, so, yeah, I like, I love that, like, yeah, like, Don Mancini, like, definitely... You know, had his has finger on the pulse of of uh, the, the the horror genre, and you know what uh, what was popular at the time, and like you mm -hmm. know, and I don't know if I had like consciously thought of that before, like seeing Child's Play two and just being like, oh yeah, because it's it's so obvious, but maybe just right. you know at this point, like with all like the scream, 
uh, that I consume. It's just at this point, I see <laughs> some sort of reference. I'm like, oh, okay, yeah, there's that, there's that, there's that. Uh, but yeah, right. everything. I even the... wondered if, yeah, go ahead. What go did ahead. you wonder? No, I even wondered if there was like a mindfulness about making Andy in this particular iteration resemble uh, Danny Torrance a little bit more from Kubrick's you, The Shining. You have a very similar Just sweater. because of like, yeah, his little yeah. sweatshirts. Because like, like one of them, I mean, one of them just had like a little car on it and the other one looked like I couldn't tell if it was a rocket or a plane. But, yeah. you know, these vehicles that, that seem very kind of like typical, you know, American kid of that of that era. Yeah. But also, but they did evoke because of it also of his little quasi bowl cut you know yeah. like they did evoke memories of danny torrance maybe they little, needed you know, uh, andy <laughs> to have like a little tricycle and like and like just cycle around the, <laughs> the simpsons house and then run into if, if you were a little smaller i would have been down they, chucky I mean, if like if tommy was still there chucky could have like stood there with with tommy in the in the hallway and just be like oh come, come play with us andy forever <laughs> and ever <laughs> <laughs> oh my god see and that is yeah. that is baby with the bathwater camp i, I, I do love, that, love but, how yeah. when because you were talking about like the ugly color scheme of the house but when when andy first yeah. comes in i love like the uh the decision to frame that from kind of like a very low angle because mm -hmm. it's like it's basically to the ground looking up and yes. it's sort of like going like you know uh Andy coming in and like looking around like it's like the the library and Beauty and the Beast like just like the enormous scope of this this house which probably <laughs> isn't that big. Um, oh, but no, I would just no. think like you know if if another way that you could do this is to kind of like show it from like if if the camera was like at the top of the stairs and like looking downwards because we see that a lot when like people come into a a, a new environment and I think it's just done so much more effectively how they do it here of like him looking upwards because mm -hmm. it's like again it like directly puts us in andy's experience and you know considering that that's what the child's play movies or at least like you know the the early ones are just like you know from his perspective it works so much better because yeah. it is kind of like what is this big scary ugly color scheme looking house that i'm like walking <laughs> into <laughs> And there's also wonderful little kind of like design nods here and there. One one that I think I always notice, uh, yeah. but kind of forget about and then re remember, is um, in again going uh, everything goes back to that tracking shot from the Simpsons bedroom to Andy. Um, that silhouette that looks like it's cut out in velvet of like uh, a mother holding a, a baby child, and it's almost ironic use at that particular moment in the movie yeah. when Andy is feeling anything but you know uh welcome in this household and in this family there's there's an active uh rejection <laughs> transaction happening from the paternal side and the mother you know because i know where the movie's gonna go you know mm -hmm. i um i i i can't help but uh, appreciate just i don't know like little little, little touches like that um I'll never understand what it, it was a mother and child that was the little ceramic thing too wasn't it that she that she was so Her protective of the Chucky bro. I don't remember. Yeah, wasn't it a mother? I thought it was a mother and a baby, but I can't really remember because I, I never look at that it. That would, I mean, there'd be a lot more symbology to that. It's just like, here's this this barren woman who's like fixated on this <laughs> this statuette of a, of, a, of a mother holding a child. <laughs> <laughs> and then cuts out like a little silhouette in velvet of the same thing. Yeah. Like she is obsessed. But yeah. maybe maybe what she really wanted was a baby. Maybe that's the problem. Yeah. I don't know. But um, I will say, because, like, say what you will about Miss Kettlewell. She knows how to read a story. That's one thing I can appreciate about her. She's sitting up there reading Pinocchio and everything. And she's like, he read, darted about the room, you know, with his limbs flinging, going, I am alive. I'm alive. And I'm just like, that's how you read a story. And Sorry, let's not, uh, like get the the irony of the fact that it is pinocchio that she's reading about a doll totally. coming to life um yeah that was not lost on Great. me um not at all yeah what is your favorite um <laughs> of, like at, at the end because like chucky dies so many times <laughs> 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 which which like kill <laughs> do you do you like the best um, I mean, I already referenced the hose. I can never get it out of my face. Yeah. Out of my face. I, I can't. You yeah, know, Freudian slip. Because all I'm imagining is this giant face <laughs> inflating from the hose that's stuck. 
I love that logically I can even make sense of it. Like the mouth is open and then he shoves in the tube. And the reason it stays is because the plastic is hot, but it is, you know, hot plastic cools very, very quickly. So maybe it just solidified his lips like over the hose. And that's and why he was also just covered go, in, like he was basically melted from all like the, the whatever. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, so it's like he probably didn't I, have I the like ability to move his, li- his limbs um <laughs> I, that whole bit like because it, it just it just keeps going it's like basically like the you know the killer comes back for one last scare but it's just like every moment yeah in that is so great like him kind of like getting that the vice or whatever and like putting the knife blade on it and just like oh and, stabbing his like that's that's what i mean of like Ch- chucky being the road runner it's just like here's something that he's going to do to himself that he knows is going to be immensely painful and he's just right. that fucking mad that it's just like yeah i'm gonna do this but now i've got like my my jabby hand <laughs> that <he's>... yeah right <laughs> the coyote um, the coyote not the road runner yeah I get oh it. sorry <laughs> but i love i love like that shot when they're kind of like they're like where could he be and he's just kind of like on the conveyor belt and he's just yes! like, surprise or whatever when he turns <laughs> <laughs> but nothing makes me laugh harder than just like watching that that i, I think scared chucky is my is one of my favorite expressions to see yeah on any iteration of that yeah. face. And he's definitely terrified as he's quivering with his yeah. head expanding. Or just like... It is so funny. It is so, And again, yeah. very Acme, Warner Brothers, Looney Tunes, kind of Merry Melody. Kind I mean, of any moment... Yeah. Like, because Chucky is like basically... Like, he has no problem inflicting harm onto other people. But it's like the moment yeah. the tables are turned, it's like he turns <laughs> into this like pathetic cowering. Like, he's just like, Andy, no, please. Yeah. <laughs> Come on! <laughs> um, Show me some oh, even mercy. When he, <laughs> yeah, no, my fa- one of my favorite lines it, 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 that that I don't know where it came from or why he <laughs> he delivered it this particular way, but I'm so glad he did. Is when he's stuck in the closet in the classroom. And he's just like, Andy, please let me out of here. <laughs> it is the most yeah. half-assed attempt. Like, I mean, because there was the attempt in the first movie with the like, we're friends to the end. Remember, blink, blink. <laughs> But in this one, uh, it's almost like he's mocking him with like, please, I'm begging you. Yeah. <laughs> Let well, she me. Tries. <laughs> it's almost like it's like the South Park again, like the Eric Cartman of just like, you know, he'll try to be nice for like, you know, right. he, you know, he Cartman is like is Cartman or whatever. And, you know, people are just like, you know, fuck you or whatever. So then he's like, yeah. oh, well, maybe like logically he'll think like if I'm just nice, if I like put on a nice sweater vest or whatever and come up to someone and like present myself right. in a way that <laughs> is respectful, that they'll forget that I'm a piece of shit and they'll exactly. be more likely to do what I want for them. And then when they see when he sees that, like, no, people still remember that you're an asshole and a killer doll. Yeah. And then he's like. I tried to be nice. Now fucking let me out of here. (laughs) (laughs) Like he has no chill. His patience level is zero. (laughs) He'll try to be nice. And it's almost like it's it's an insult to him if he has to reduce himself (laughs) to being cordial or polite because it's like that that is not who he is at all. So it's like I'm going to kill you even more for making me be disingenuous to who I really am. And that's why I love. Well, that's why. That's why I love Chucky because he is. He is such a complex character. He is. Oh yeah, mm. he's a complex fellow. But what's your favorite uh, death of his of the five of his? that we get at the end of the movie? <laughs> I mean, there's the one with like the doll parts when he's in the yeah. tiny little box at the on that on that uh, conveyor belt. I think yeah. that. I don't know, because I mean, like the the the, the 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 him blowing up is the most definitive. Um, yeah. but I do love what, like when the, the, I guess like the melted plastic or whatever that shit is like does get doused on him. And I like the fact that oh. Andy does that. Like they both take turns like yes. killing him. Like I wish it was like Andy was the one to like deliver the final blow. Like no offense to Kyle, mm-hmm. but it's just like, you're, you're the new kid, you know, like let the, mm-hmm. let the, uh, the, the, the old pro get this one but um i don't know like I, I i think that i don't know if i have a favorite kill but like i said my favorite moment is just him like uh putting the the blade on his uh bloody stump yeah even like the it's, him it's... going like him getting the hand ripped off because like yeah. that was a that was a funny like just again seeing him like feel like 
actual human pain in any yeah. moment because it's just like you know you're getting a taste of your own medicine and it, it, like his reaction because it's like it's so unjust for him that that's what makes it funny <laughs> But I also feel like he's the hero. I mean, even though he knows he's the villain, like he is yeah. the hero in his story. Like he wants to succeed above, above all. And that's yeah. when he gets a little action movie in a digestible way. It doesn't yeah. feel like, ew, now it's all action movie. But I mean, he is the badass in his mind now putting that knife, you know, like, like I'm going to suffer over you, but I'm going to have a fucking knife for a hand and that'll show him. <laughs> bellow, 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 bellow. But I also <laughs> appreciate like to speak to your comment about uh, uh, Kyle. I love the fact that, like, the, I mentioned the flipping off. I love that she gets to kind of come full circle yeah. while he's, you know, about to explode and everything. And, or I think he's going up up the conveyor belt into the little box. And that's when you get, the again, another one of those low angle shots of her face and just her middle finger slowly rising up into the yeah. frame. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, no, fuck you, asshole. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but um and then of course there's like i feel like maybe one last homage uh in that ending because another thing i get from that like andy i have no idea when they don't know where they're gonna go is a kind of this could be the start of a beautiful friendship <laughs> <laughs> like not even a yeah. horror movie but it's got like a, a big casablanca kind of like yeah. I don't know, uh, a feel to it. Like, the world is our oyster. And just, like, the, 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 the signage outside, like, the big good guy doll yeah. waving. <laughs> yeah. Still, it will it. always loom. You can't escape it's, it. But and that's, like, that's typically the, yeah, the ending of, like, most of the Child's Play movies. It's just, like, where do we go from here? Um, like, there's yeah. so much uncertainty. It's just, like, it's it almost goes back to, is it, Texas Chainsaw Massacre that has like who will be left and what will be left of them because it's uh -huh. like who will survive and, and what, what will be and left, what will of, be them, left yes. of them because it's like I know that like Kyle and Andy are surviving but it's just like the what will be left of them I'm thinking more just like not so much like limbs uh, mm -hmm. or body parts as much as it is like like just their psyche like how how mm -hmm. how will they get through this because like I said in the in the last Child's Play thing like I think the the trauma that Andy has endured in like these two movies now is so much greater than the five minutes of Laurie Strode going across the street and finding three dead friends and then running back to the other side of the road. <laughs> and, <you know. laughs> I, mean, I will never live yeah. that down. <laughs> that is not 40 I, years I'm not going to compare <laughs> trauma, but I'm gonna, I will say, one of, uh, speaking of trauma, like yeah. one of the things that I really appreciate now in hindsight um, that maybe I didn't have the presence of mind to appreciate because I didn't know the future mm -hmm. when it <clears> happened. It's just that one, there's one moment where Andy's sitting there talking to Kyle about uh, Chucky, um, and he just says, like, I know Chucky, will, wherever I go, Chucky will find me. And I was just kind of like, and he will. <laughs> You're right. The fact that I know you have your own Alex Vincent issues, but the fact that I don't like, have Alex any Vincent, issues with him. <laughs> Really? Um, the fact that he... <laughs> I love... Alex Vincent is listening to this somewhere, maybe, and now you're making it sound like I have issues with him. <laughs> maybe because of what you said. Anyway, um, I'm going to say... Anyway, what I appreciate... Um, I'll just put it this way. What I yeah. appreciate about his presence, uh, you know, like thus far, like in the franchise, is the fact that like I can watch a movie in a moment like that and just go like, and you're right. You're right. He always will. Yeah. He will always come back for you. You know, <laughs> in a weird kind of comforted way. Like it's wonderful that something could have existed with me this long. This relationship between this yeah. this man this man who has grown from this child and this doll. You yeah. know, I appreciate yeah. that. Yeah. Now I feel, now I whatever you've painted me as like this <laughs> Alex Vincent hater, which is like not true at all. But okay. <laughs> Didn't we already cover Chucky we, you know, season one? Yeah, we one. talked about Chucky season one. Like, <laughs> like, yeah, there, there, there were certain things. Like, I, I don't know what he's been up to uh, in like the interim between Child's Play two and I mean, even like the cameos that he made in uh, uh, Curse, and then like the the role he played in yeah. Cult, and then of, of course coming back to this. But I like acting is not his his full time gig, is it? Well, this is the thing also, like yeah. one thing that, that I, I always get reminded of whenever I watch kind of like uh, in-depth making of uh, featurettes about movies yeah. that feature children giving astonishing performances. For the most part, a lot of children, actors, I mean, a lot of them are little adults. 
But then there are also the children actors who are children. But you can, a director who knows how to work with children who are children, you know, just kind of like your typical children, know how to evoke a performance out of a child, you know, to get yeah. the performance they need and what's going what's going on like on set to manipulate that is or to evoke that rather not manipulate but yeah. to evoke that inspire that is um is completely different is you know like something completely removed from yeah. the situation we're perceiving as an adult i i i don't know what the what the process yeah, is yeah he has not had it, like so. many film roles over the like after child's play 2 he was in my family treasure which okay. uh, maybe that was like a tv movie or something in 1993 and then there was there's no credit until 2008 uh okay. which is dead country because obviously like you know he you know went he was a kid you know he went to high school and graduated and probably you know might have went to college afterwards so it's mm -hmm. i don't you know he's done a little bit since and that's probably just because he is like uh like a genre veteran that yeah. you know mm -hmm. it, you know it, people would love to have him in his things i'm not i'm not saying that he's bad in 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 the chucky show it's just he's exactly who i would expect him to be you know like he's he shows okay. up and he's and you know he's part of the camp like i love that he's playing him that's that's the only thing that's important but yes. it's like you know it, it's 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 it is what it is and it's and i love it Good Make for you. Make me sound like I hate uh, Thomas Vincent. <laughs> <laughs> uh, run the tapes. Run the tapes, people. But anyway, listen to uh, that speaking episode. Of, but speaking of veteran, uh, uh, veterans of, of the genre and everything yeah. like that, because uh, we mentioned quite a few people and quite a few of their credits and everything like that. One yeah. person we didn't really cover, though, was Garrett Graham, who plays Phil. And I just didn't want to let it be unsaid because uh, not only is he in one of my favorite horror movies of the 70s, which is also camp, high camp, uh, Phantom of the Paradise, which, okay. have you seen that yet? No. Oh my God. I wonder what your response will be to it, because I absolutely adore his performance in it. Is that it's like high a camp. musical? Let me just put it that way. Yeah. Well, that's it's why good. you, that's why, that's why you love it. And why I have not <laughs> but seen But it's not it. a traditional musical. Yeah. It is much more aligned kind of like with musical satire. Yeah. But um, but because it is camp, camp, but it's also I don't. It's just divine. I I adore it. It's so absurd. But one another thing you brought up the fact that uh, Grace Zabriskie was uh, a Seinfeld al Seinfeld alum. So was Garrett Graham. He oh. played the clown in the opera episode where I believe Crazy Joe gets his costume and goes backstage and has an exchange with uh, Kramer. But he's the initial clown. He's like the clown who was supposed to be the clown. Uh, okay, yeah, the, the clown. Yeah, I, so yeah, so he's on Seinfeld yeah, too. Yeah, I'd have to see it. Well, I mean, like, okay. well, he, yeah. yeah, Grace had like a multi-season uh, recurring yes. uh, role, but um, and he was the clown. He was like, the clown <laughs> but it was. One episode, yeah, that's one. That's one of my favorite episodes, though. So I just thought it it okay. bore. <laughs> fair, <laughs> fair enough. Yeah. Um, yeah, <laughs> big Seinfeld uh, stands here. Anyway, um, <laughs> I, I think that we can probably get to the cherry picker. Mm-hmm. Okay, yeah, let's do that. It's not like they killed people. On purpose. First order of business, we need to pick a cherry on top. And Ooh. there's... It's hard because there's there's a lot of like really good contenders here, and yeah. I probably have it narrowed down to three. But um, who are your top three? Well, it's gonna be Andy, Kyle, okay. or Chucky. Last time, Do you remember I, who the cherry on top was? Okay, it was, good, yes, good, it was, Car was Karen ask. for the first one, and I and I believe for good. Chucky season one we weren't doing the cherry on top yet, but. I think that you and I decided uh, retroactively. I don't know if this was on a podcast episode or just like uh, on something else that we we decided that Lexi was the the cherry on top yes. for for season yes. one of Chucky. So so that's very much that so. that is who our ch child's play uh, cherry on tops have been so far. Okay, mm -hmm. um, I'm <sighs> love Kyle. Glad she's in there, but yeah. I gotta say, I think. <sighs> I think I'm in line with Andy. 
for this particular I, chapter. I agree because this is the la- this is probably like Andy's best outing. And I feel like this is right. the last time that Andy's probably <laughs> it's the last time that Andy's probably gonna get um this opportunity. <laughs> and I know that Chucky oh. is this is like we're only seeing the beginning really of like Chucky's yeah. uh like snark, if you can call it that. And it's gonna get much yes. better uh, moving forward. So I, I'm comfortable with giving it to Andy for this for this Great. particular movie. Yay. All right. So now getting to the cherry picker. Last week, we asked you who deserves to die the most in the menu. Uh, mm-hmm. I nominated Tyler. You nominated Richard, a.k.a. Judith Light's husband. <laughs> we called him. And uh, across yeah. Patreon, Instagram, and YouTube, the vote came down to 748 for wow. Tyler versus... Yeah. 122 for Richard. Thanks for coming, guys. <laughs> <laughs> thanks for punching. <laughs> thanks, thanks for being in my corner. Yeah. And everybody else just thanks for voting. Yeah. That's cool. Okay. And yeah, definitely Comments. more more people showed out to vote for this than the Army of Dirt the Army of Darkness <laughs> episode. Army and like Army. I said, I predicted I predicted that yeah. it was not going to be popular for some reason because people don't like, or at least are our listeners slash viewers are not into Evil Dead. The majority. The 2013 pod That might be. I will. Evil yeah. Dead. If 2013 kind of like switches gears and that becomes like the one that, you know, uh, people are like glomming onto, then I mean, I, I wouldn't be surprised. But at the same time, I, yeah. I, I, I would be hurt if it wasn't. So, you know, we'll, we'll see how, how that goes. But we'll be covering it soon. Okay. So, but uh, yeah. Uh, let's just see what uh, what the the thoughts are on the menu. Uh, mm. Singular Rookhart. Uh, I'm curious about Tyler's original date and how exactly Chef planned to fit her into the menu. Hmm. I, I hadn't even yeah. thought that far. Wow. It's yeah, that's strange because I mean, like, there had to have been like some sort of vetting process that. Yeah you know, beforehand of just, like, who could come to this and who was invited and all that. Because uh, even... Uh, and research, like, like hours of research. Because yeah. even what's the the, uh, the actor's assistant, because, like, when John Leguizamo was like, well, can you let her go? Because she's, you know, didn't do anything. He's like, what what college did you go to? And I think... Or he's just like, did you go to Brown? And she's like, Yale. And he's like, no, she's got to right, die. Right, right, right. <laughs> like, it, was a, it was another Ivy League, yeah, so... Yeah. Fuck you. Yeah. Um, I wonder, well, that may have just been just the fact that she was associated with Tyler. Anyone who's Tyler's first choice, that's probably it. Yeah. You know, <laughs> that's probably condemning enough. Yeah. Whatever would motivate him to select someone. Or whatever is... motivate that person to be with Tyler. Then... Yeah, that too. Yeah. Double-edged sword. Yeah. But good for her for, you know, getting out while she could. Cause, yeah. Yeah. Um... She should have been cherry on top. <laughs> <laughs> this unknown character. <laughs> yeah, and, right. This Anthony DePuzo <laughs> says, good one. They both deserve it. Tyler brought uh, Margot knowing what uh, would happen, but I still, mm-hmm. excuse me, I still couldn't help but feel the secondhand embarrassment during his cooking scene and feel for him a tiny bit. I'm going to go with Richard. Mm. The description Margot gave to his chef about what he had her do truly deserved me. Disgusting. <sighs> Disgusting human. Yeah. Norma Sorry. Panish. Uh, spoilers if you haven't seen it. Uh, well, I, oh. everyone has it. This, you know, this is, we talk about the shows yeah. and we haven't. So if you haven't seen the, the menu, then skip over this part. But the other one was a total creep, but hands down, it's Tyler for knowingly taking Aaron on a death date. I mean, he even agreed uh, that he deserved death, loved this film, and always loving this pod. Thank you, Norma. Aww. Uh, Space Monkey Pants. 100% Tyler. At the start, he was just ridiculously obnoxious. And to be honest, that was enough. But finding out that he knew and essentially tried to murder Margot slash Aaron, that's just pure evil. Blue Box 87. Uh, These are tortillas. Tortillas de la Cosa. (laughs) Sorry, I had to. Tyler gets my vote. (laughs) 
Okay, tortillas. cool. <laughs> tortilla. Tortillas. I love that she said it with the accent. The tortillas. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Love it. Love it. <laughs> Ashley Williams went on to my second account to cast a vote on Tyler's behalf. Edit. He voted for himself, of course. Okay. <laughs> Dayman, fighter of the Nightman, watched it this weekend. Mm-hmm. This is a tough choice, but Tyler was such an a hole from the jump. <laughs> I got to go with him. Okay. A hole. Grant Dempsey, forget Keith and his duvet hack. Did you see Tyler's new dicing method? Now that was impressive. Yeah, I voted for Tyler. Bad enough to die, not good enough to die by s'more. Uh, that was a the key thing was a reference to barbarian uh-huh, okay i just uh-huh. wasn't sure if you were <laughs> if you were up to speed on that oh well oh, thank you yeah that's what i'm here for i'm just you know <laughs> to help me yeah help me help you help me exactly yes. <laughs> avery hines tyler taking Anya Taylor Joy as his plus one and not telling her she'd die is so incredibly <laughs> messed up. He was whiny and annoying from the second he stepped on screen. Plus, he's not even hot. But thank you so much for oh. all you do. I listen to all the pods. Love you guys. Thank I think, love you too, but that's that's subjective. A lot of people think Nicholas Holt is hot. I think he's very fetching. He's sort of like, it's interesting yeah. that because he was, I first knew him from... Like the X Men movies. Oh, okay. I'm sure. I'm yeah. sure. Like, because he, he was like a child actor in something before. Yeah, yeah, about a boy. That's okay, yeah, I that might have been the, what I remember. But he was like a kid in that, so I don't, you know. But like when he came into, yeah. um, uh, like X Men, because he played young Beast, or like it's like the younger yeah. version of like Kelsey Grammer, and I just like, yes. I'm like, why is he not playing young James Marsden? Because he looks like so much more like him, just based mm. on like bone structure. Um, sure. But yeah, he, uh, super attractive, and he's um, he's he's going to be in Renfield. That's coming out soon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which oh, I'm... and I, uh, also, I love the fact that like <clears throat> the anger is directed because he took Anya Taylor Joy. <laughs> yeah. How dare you take Anya Taylor Joy? <laughs> not Margot and not Aaron, but Anya Taylor Joy. If that were the case, I probably would have chosen him too. But <laughs> well, thank. Okay, well. Avery, thank you for for commenting Thanks, and Avery. thank you for, for the, the kind words about the the pod. Yeah, Julian Van uh, Wagoner. If I had to spend an evening with Tyler, I'd hang myself right beside him so he gets my vote. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's funny. Amanda <laughs> Collishaw. Tyler is the obvious choice because he's the literal worst, but Richard is my pick. He's gross and totally had everything he got coming to him. Cue the cell block tango because he had it coming. Yay! I get that reference! (laughs) Do you get that reference, Zach? I I do, yeah. Sky the doll. Never seen it. Smash Tyler past Richard. (laughs) (laughs) Like, smash? Like... Like I'm usually smash means like, yeah, I'd smash yeah. that like a thumbs up. But is up that like a smash, like the, the Tyler, is... like vote button? I have no yeah. idea. Uh, a little I more no context. Idea follow up. <laughs> um, Thomas Baker says Nicholas Holt was good at playing Tyler, even if he was so annoying, but my vote goes to Richard. Movie okay. Maniac okay. 03. I choose Tyler. The other guy is probably a worse person. But it's a real dick move to do what Tyler did. Both actors did an amazing job. The only one I feel like who didn't deserve to be there is John Leguizamo or Anya. <gasps> is it Anya or is it Anya? Anya. 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 But the chef should really? use the uh, Av- Avada Kedavra curse on them both. What's that? <laughs> Avada, Kedavra. Ave, 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 Avada like or Veda Kedavra. I don't. I don't know what that is. <laughs> maybe maybe it's a Ray Fiennes reference. I don't know. Oh, know is that like a like a Harry Potter? Like what's the fucking? Ooh, oh, you know what? Um, I bet you it is. Um, um what's I the? You, I the forgot he was even in it. Something. To, I don't Voldemort. know. I've never watched the the Harry Potter. I mean, I've seen. I watched them, but like once. I've seen each one of them. I saw the first. Two movies twice, and the rest of it I've only seen once. Yeah. Um, 
It's Leviosa, not Leviosa. <laughs> <laughs> That's the only line I know. Um, Hamish, Tyler, just because he's a bit of a, oh, I hate this word, of a prick, to be honest. <laughs> Fishboy671, both are assholes, obviously, but Tyler knowingly endangered not only his own life, but the life of an innocent woman by inviting Margot to come with him. Tyler is the only choice. And okay. uh, finally, Walid El uh, Habab, the cherry picker, when is the Scream 6 episode cherry picker going to air? When the after the movie comes out. First of all, it's gonna be this. Yeah, it's, it's this month. Go, it, you'll see our whole schedule if you if you go to our social media, uh, or yeah. you know, or the or the YouTube channels, uh, so you can check it out there. And I'll tell you the links in a bit. But we need to vote or nominate right now for you to vote. Yeah. So <clears throat> this one's not gonna be difficult f- for me because it's it's obviously going to be <laughs> Phil Simpson. <laughs> Right. Um, for all the reasons that we discussed, he's he's just a he's a sociopath. He's literally fucking. He hates children, and he's letting his wife foster them, <laughs> even though that they're not fit to be foster parents, because. Either he doesn't want to, I, well, no, it can't be that they don't want to have kids. Like, she's unable to, and it's like he's giving her this, like, breadcrumb that he's, like, right. doesn't even want her to have. Just just so probably she could get off his back. I don't know. And he's just, yeah, he's a he's an asshole to Andy. And, um, yeah, I, I, I'm not going to say anything else. Okay. <clears throat> um... This is tough because all the, because uh, I, even, even if you hadn't chosen him, like I dislike him. I, he, he, I mean, he, he, he's probably going to win, but um, I, we all know who but, you're going mean, to, who you're going to nominate. So, you know, well, cause this is the thing. Um, <laughs> like I'm, 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 I'm motivated. I wish I could just nominate all those fucking kids on the bus. But I can't, um, so I'm not going to, and I'm not even going to focus on the kid because I don't even know if he has a name. But um, and Miss Kettlewell Microchip. is awful. But I, but I also enjoy watching Beth Grant's performance. So just in the interest of seeing like how much the scales tip, I have a feeling they're going to tip in your favor, of course. But I just want to know how many people kind of share my irk. So I will say Joanne Simpson. Just for her enabling of Phil's abuse or even potential for abuse, and 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 just the landmine <laughs> environment that she creates for a foster child. Like what a horrible space to raise minors in. You know, you're shaping little lives, and for all of the reasons that I brought up, um, yeah. I I mean, I just want. I, I I think she deserves to die as much as he does because this is the thing. I don't I don't sympathize with her when he's dead. I'm like, you know what? <laughs> you don't care that much. <laughs> Your marriage is falling apart anyway. You're just taking shambles. it out on someone else. It's easier to blame the boy. So there you go. Vote All your right. Heart, vote your conscience. All right. And you can vote on Instagram, YouTube, or Patreon if you support us over there. Uh, I do want to welcome uh, a slew of new Patreon supporters. So welcome to Ooh. Sean O'Flynn, Liberty Wells, Jessica Thacker, Sonia Arif, Jordan Smith, Dominic Tarelli, Alex is lame. Oh, and I'm sure he isn't, but uh, yeah, <laughs> that's his name. <laughs> and uh, Brandon Wingert. So welcome Yay! aboard. Thank you so much for your support, everyone. Um, welcome, if you, everyone. If you would like to support uh, on Patreon, that is uh, my Patreon account, you will gain early access to all of our podcast episodes for The Cherry Picker. We also have our monthly exclusive, The Cherry Picker After Dark, 
which is available Ooh. to the Freddy Krueger tier supporters. And this month, we're doing something really special because Scream 6 is coming out. We're going to start a potential new series that, that will be <laughs> recurring if, it, if it's successful, but we're going to start doing Scream Survivor. And um, yeah. I am a huge fan of Survivor, the, the reality competition show. And I just figured how much fun would it be if we took characters from the Scream franchise, stranded them on a deserted island, and forced them to <laughs> compete against each other for a million dollars and the, the, the title of Soul Survivor. Um, yeah, that, That's going to be a lot of fun. So look out for that. That's coming later this month. Um, I would also like to thank Andre Felix. I, I mentioned earlier, but uh, our uh, faithful editor who does an amazing job putting all these videos together. If you are new yes. to the podcast and you're watching uh, us on YouTube, you can also listen to these episodes uh, streaming. The RSS feed link is in the descriptions down below. And if you're listening to us, uh, you can also watch us on YouTube. It's The Cherry Picker, so subscribe to us over there. Uh, we're also on <laughs> social media. If you go on Instagram, at The Cherry Picker Pod, and that's where you can find the poll to vote, obviously, uh, as well as uh, on YouTube, the community tab. And where can they find you, Edward? You can find me on YouTube and Instagram, at Edward is truth, one word. That's Edward is truth, one word. Look for me there on those platforms. Uh, and how about you, Zach Cherry? Where can they find you? You can find me on Instagram <laughs> at Retro Bitch Face. I'm also on YouTube, Zach Cherry. Would he say, he wouldn't say Z, he would say Z, right? Z A C K Cherry. <laughs> Do I gotta spell that? <laughs> and and then Twitter, which is Jack Cherry Aid. What do we what do we got going on next week? That's a good question, Zach Cherry. Um is it uh, um, is it the one where uh, you don't know? Do you? We didn't talk about it. Before. No, I don't. Okay. <laughs> we are doing. I should know. Yeah, next week uh, is first word, second word. It's a it? it's a Stephen King uh, adapted. Oh story. wait, wait. Okay, so it's not. Okay, so is it the one? <gasps> wait, wait. Is it? Did we talk about it in this pod? No. Shit. Um, okay. Is it it's a theatrical release though? It is. Is it Are we gonna play this wait, so we game? Did... People are waiting. People <laughs> people are like they're like waiting to, you know, go use the bathroom or whatever. I don't know what what, what their current situation is. We're they're just like, come on, end the podcast. Man, they can they can pause it. They can take us to the bathroom with them, man. Somebody's probably already going to the bathroom listening to this. If you're right on now the toilet, if you're on the toilet or we're on the toilet at any part of this episode, we salute you. Yeah, and don't, just, be for just don't be scared. We can't see for you. For just shitting while you listen to us. <laughs> <laughs> We're all about dropping yeah. the excrement, man. The, just let it go. Okay, that's enough. The, um, it's, okay sorry. Well, the, the release date for the podcast, because this is why, this, this is why uh, I chose uh, this, this uh, particular movie, is that yeah. it's March 14th, which is 314... And that's the the number for pi, the first three numbers for <gasps> pi. So what Stephen King movie has pi in it? Life of Pi. What? what? I don't know. Okay. That's not a Stephen King movie. <laughs> Why would you tell me that? Okay, wait, wait. American Pi. Gypsy <laughs> Curse. Maybe that'll help you. Gypsy Curse Pi. Yeah. Gypsy Curse Pi. What? That sound? No. no. 
What? Can I just Hi. can I just say say it because we're wasting so much time. Everyone is really yeah, annoyed. Yeah, more, more so <laughs> no, me. No, it's suspense. It's suspense. It's <laughs> it's thinner. But, okay, what is it? What it's is thinner. It? It's Stephen. King's oh, thinner. thinner. Okay, yeah, that's why. Because I haven't seen it yet. That's why. There's a fucking there's pie. You know. I was thinking of like what's well, a, what's a what's a horror movie with pie in it for for pie day. So. It, it wasn't. It wasn't American Pie. No, because that's not a horror movie. It, <laughs> no, and it, it wasn't. I thought you when you said pie, I thought like mathematics. Is that the pie you were talking? Oh my about? god! Anyway, like, thank you so much for eat. watching and listening, and we will be. <laughs> <laughs>